I'm ready. I am supposed to checkmate black. Okay, I know that queen could go here, but then, ah, the knight, the black knight can stop me if I go here. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. Yay, I got it. All right, this is easy. Next one, white to play and win. Okay, um, well, I can go here. Oh, uh, something with the knight. I know it's something with the knight, but I can't take this. Oh. Why didn't I do that? Magnus Carlsen, Sergei Karyak in New York, 2016. I was in New York when he played this game. I should know what he did. I should know what he did. Okay, I'm just gonna go for queen here. It needs to be something with the queen. Queen goes here, then king can take the queen. Uh, what other pieces do I have? I also, hmm, I'm gonna try the queen here. And I did it, yay. I'm just as good as the world champion Magnus Carlsen. That's the feeling I have anyway. I'm gonna study on chessable every day. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. So this is the broadcast tool here, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see in all its glory. You can see the notation. You can also see the engine evaluation next to each move, and also how long they spend. What I like is you can make your own moves on the board. You can check the alternatives to what the players did. And even for the moves you make, you get the computer evaluation here. Fantastic. Then you get it quicker and better as a premium member, such as yours truly. What I also like, there is a chat function. You can exchange things yeah. with people from all over the world. If you want to see something else, let's say you're watching a tournament and you want to see all the games at once, no problem displaying. I have no idea how many games there are, like 128 games at the same time. You can do even more. This is a team competition. You click on multi-board. That's beautiful. You can see all the eight games going on at once. You can see the games and standings, which I... What we got? I'll click around. Games and standings, here. Yeah. Analysis, if we click on that tab, that's Let's a nice click tab. on it. You can see that it's a great little graphical illustration. The red line is zero, that is the absolute even mark. And if the white bars are go up, the further up they go, the bigger the advantage. And the black bars show a black advantage. Then there is a database, and here we get the alternatives. And we, if we click on a move in the database, bam, yeah. it gets played on the board. Fantastic. And then the PGN can even be downloaded. I like that feature. Yeah. Whatever tournament or game you're following, you click it and you open it in the program of your choice. Yeah, and one of the great things I like to see as well is when we get a video from the playing hall. I like to see them in their seats, nervous, you feel the tension, you feel like you're there, don't you? Chess is really becoming a spectator's internet sport. Great that we can see that. I also love to see um, the fact that we can get in some of our friends to join us during the broadcast. And it's all interactive, that's what we love. And a lot of overview functions there. A lot of great functions there, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you take advantage of all.
let's get back to the, uh, to the commentary. Keep tweeting us, hashtag C24Live. We love to hear from you. Ask us anything about, mainly about Lawrence Trent. Life, but if you have other questions, they're also welcome. Also, send us anything you like about Jan. F <laughs> hashtag C24 Live. Absolutely. Uh I'm ready. I am supposed to checkmate black. Okay, I know that queen could go here, but then, ah, the knight, the black knight can stop me if I go here. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. Yay, I got it. All right, this is easy. Next one, white to play and win. Okay, um, well, I can go here. Oh, uh, something with the knight. I know it's something with the knight, but I can't take this. Oh, why didn't I do that? Magnus Carlsen, Sergei Karyak in New York, 2016. I was in New York when he played this game. I should know what he did. I should know what he did. Okay, I'm just going to go for queen here. It needs to be something with the queen. Queen goes here, then king can take the queen. Uh, what other pieces do I have? I also, hmm, I'm going to try the queen here. And I did it! Yay! I'm just as good as the world champion Magnus Carlsen. That's the feeling I have anyway. I'm going to study on chessable every day. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Hello everybody, welcome to today's excitement. We have the world champion of chess, Magnus Carlsen, taking on one of the biggest youngest scar scars and stars in the game, Vladislav Artemyev, the man from Siberia, 23 year old Russian, and one of the very best blitz players in the whole wide world. They are facing each other in these quarterfinals of the chess.com speed chess championship. And I am delighted to be back with the legend, a time Russian chess champion, future Russian Hearthstone enthusiast. Peter Svidler is here. Peter, how are you today? Baffled by, by that introduction, but, uh, but happy to be uh, joining you once again to compare our, you know, respective levels of enthusiasm for this uh, wondrous, wondrous event that we are about to witness. Uh, jokes aside, Magnus has had, uh, I think, very interesting and uh, competitive battles with uh, with Artemiev uh, in the past. And uh, the games that I have in mind, they've mainly been played live, which I thought uh, you know, to my mind, made the fact that Artemiev was uh, doing quite well in them uh, even more impressive. But he's definitely one of the you know growing generation uh, of people who uh, are extremely well acquainted with these 
online blitz formats. So on a good day, this could be uh, this could be quite close. But of course, Magnus starts as a huge favorite. The world champion recently turned 30, lost his first and so far only match in his 30s, the finals of the skilling open. He lost to Wesley. So generally, I don't think it's a stretch to say he does not enjoy losing all that much. He will probably be eager to win a match in his 30s. Yeah, definitely would like to kind of uh, start setting the record straight uh, in this uh, new decade. Uh, this is all somewhat tongue in cheek. He's not suddenly a new man just because, you know, a heartless calendar suggests he's uh, <laughs> turned the corner. But uh, I think he would be pretty annoyed by by the fact that he lost that final to Wesley. I don't think he, he likes losing in general and uh, losing that would have been would have been unpleasant on, unpleasant on his birthday and also in a you know in a flagship tour. So this this won't be proper compensation for it, but it'll go some way to improving his mood. So the only way to come back from a loss is win stuff. What can you tell us about Mr. Artemyev? 22 years old, been married for like two years. Yeah. Up and comer. Definitely. I mean, up and comer feels a bit unfair considering he was like 27, 63 years ago or seemingly three years ago. I may be slightly fuzzy on the, uh, on Year the and timeline a half there. Yeah, probably, probably a bit less than three. Uh, but he has been a fixture for a while, has been, you know, arguably on a bit of a downswing from those lofty heights of, uh, I think he was at that point maybe in the top 10 even. Uh, but still a very, very strong player. I think uh, uh, it definitely used to be true that he he needed to uh, to become a bit more, you know, theoretically sound uh, when he started playing at the, against the absolute best. I think his, his repertoire started struggling a little bit in particular with Black, but he has been uh, tightening, uh, tightening it up. And he also... I don't know him particularly well, but it feels to me that he is very much a, a mood player. He is, uh, uh, like his A game and his maybe even, you know, A, a minus, let alone B game differ wildly. Uh, and uh, when he plays well, he is a huge danger to anyone. But when he is for some reason off his game a little bit, uh, there's there's a bit of a gulf between those two those two states and it will be interesting to see which one shows up today we shall see the games are about to begin it is the format i'm sure you are familiar with at this point 90 minutes of five five plus one blitz games 60 minutes of three plus one blitz games and then 30 minutes of one plus one bullet games the world champion obviously good in all disciplines but i believe Artemyev is also one of these cases where you can say the fewer time he has on his clock, the stronger he is. Yeah, he won't be anyway. frightened. Uh, won't be frightened by going down to uh, to mere seconds. Uh, he's had a, a lot of experience doing this. Is a <laughs> it feels weird to say these things about a twenty-two year old kid, but uh, he is definitely a seasoned campaigner in terms of uh, playing online blitz and. Uh, uh, Mechanics should be very sound. How does this work? Does does he sit at home and play play online blitz bullet games a lot, or what's the? How do these young whiz kids go about their online business? Well, I assume he does. I mean, he he plays in all of the you know quote unquote calendar events, and uh, uh, I assume he gets in a lot of practice even uh, even outside of. Uh, official competition uh, has been a, a very active uh, online player even even before we had a sort of a established established weekly calendar of things you can play in. Mm. I was addicted to online blitz from like 19 till 22, 23. What about you? You usually find things to be addicted to yeah, I, I was online. definitely. Was Blitz one of those at some point? Yeah, uh, we 
Although some, I don't think we played very much. We were definitely sort of active on we ICC. We played a bit in the ICC. You know, yeah, but not, early not, not nearly as much as I played against uh, some of the other sort of sort of top regulars of the time. I think we we never really, you know, had those, you know, three hour long matches of. Uh, but yeah, I, I think from maybe ninety eight to ninety nine until. 2002, I was very, very active. I was uh, in the running for like rating, uh, rating records and things until, you know, the new generation came onto the scene and just demolished those. But yeah, I, I just kind of suddenly gave up at some point. I, I had a bit of an epiphany, uh, not a particularly profound epiphany, but I had a bit of an epiphany and I thought, you know, this, this does not appear to bring me any particular joy or at least not as much as it used to. And it is a huge time sink uh, to, uh, to, to, or at least for me it was, uh, with, with, you know, the amount of volume I was putting in. Amount of volume? Just volume. What am I talking about? Uh, and I basically just just quit cold. I, I went from spamming. You know, I never really played bullets, but I but I spammed three-minute baton. And then I I just went from from that to not playing at all for like 15 years. Boom! There you go. Um, no, I'm not going to inquire about other stuff. I'm ready for the chess. Carlson versus Artemiev about to begin. If only we had Mr. Dodger here to to begin the chess. Other than that, there is very little to talk about. Magnus Carlson, 30 years old, bloodthirsty. Vladislav Artemiev, 22 years old has dropped quite a bit in over the board chess's rating is only 2708 and by only i mean compared to his peak of 2761 which peter mentioned a year and a half ago but it's safe to assume he has spent some time working on his online speed chess game and will be a worthy opponent for the world champion who will win today's match let's face it and then <laughs> play against Maxim Vashila Graf in the semifinals. Let's, uh, I mean, let's just announce the, the winner of that side of the bracket while, while we're at it. You, you appear to have very few doubts, so we can just go all in on predicting the winner of, of that side. And then if he does end up playing Hikaru in the final, do you have a prediction for that final? Um, I never bet against Magnus. That's my my rule. Sometimes it fails, but more often than not, it doesn't. Yeah, but it, it has been somewhat surprisingly failing, uh, failing recently more than you would expect. And uh, you, you have to say, I understand and more than you would expect. Yeah. You mean one match, right? <laughs> that is more than you <laughs> more than you would expect, no? Uh, um, yeah, but I'm saying he did win everything else. Um, yeah, but you have to say his performance in the uh, in the scaling open was very sloppy by his standards. No, I, I agree. He didn't look dominant in the quarterfinals and semifinals against Giri and Nepomneshi. I always had that feeling that when it gets close, he will have something extra in the tank. But in the on that last day against Wesley, and also the day before, where he let comfortable lead slip. A 2-1 lead, but he was pulling the shots in that match. Um, yeah, it didn't look like he had it, and I'm not sure. I believe this even shorter time control and more games will suit him a little better because he can just play chess without focusing on the tactics of these four game matches here in the skilling open. But yeah, I agree. He did not look as dominant as maybe unfairly we have come to expect him to be in all these events. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm sure we're sort of overhyping it a little bit because the field is, uh, if we take the the tour, the field is very, very packed. And uh, the tournament we're covering right now, starting from the top eight, uh, it's an absolute who and who, who, who is who of, uh, you know, the, the top online players and just generally the top players of the day. So uh, it's it's slightly unfair, you know, the... the the way we expect Magnus to just absolutely win absolutely everything, but it still is sort of the expectation. Uh, 
And and yeah, the, the, the skilling open, it's not even that he lost the final. It was really uh, he himself said in an interview that his play in the round robin was not up to his own personal very high standards, but he still qualified with absolute ease. There was never really any question he will qualify. And you could make an argument that, you know, as long as he knows he is in the quarters, it doesn't really matter uh, if he scores in sort of all the points or, you know, half of the points or uh, uh, whatever ends up happening. But yeah, the, the three knockout matches, he uh, he definitely looked uh, below par and, and played below par and uh, he will want to to put that right. Yeah, maybe starting with the Rui Lopar in the first game, but we have a slight delay. Apparently, we do not know why, but we expect the world champion to have overslept. That's just my interpretation of the situation. I have zero evidence to back up this claim. Yeah, and uh, chess fan has some strong, strong advice for for Magnus, telling him to go back to to the classroom and start studying some proper openings because he kept on getting worse positions in Italians and the Caros and the Sicilians. Not entirely sure how tongue in cheek this is, uh, but I mean the statement is true, uh, uh, at least in some in some way because Magnus Magnus was running into issues in. Uh, whatever he chose to play against Wesley, but um, it still felt to me that, you know, it was a kind of a weird combination of him uh, trying to play for a win with Black, at least uh, on the final day when he kept on uh, playing the Caro against Wesley. It really did seem to me like he was sort of inviting trouble there uh, to a very large degree. Uh, But when you do that against a player of Wesley's strength, it is much better if you are, you know, in your absolute top form, because you will get punished for inaccuracies playing uh, slightly dodgy lines. Let's put it like this. Not that Karakan is, you know, inherently an incorrect opening or anything, but he was also choosing the lines in the Karo, which were, uh, I think, provocative is one way to describe it. And uh, if you do that, you really should be playing your absolute A game, and uh, he definitely wasn't on the day. Yeah, I do agree. Playing devil's advocate, I would still argue he did score one and a half out of two with the Carroll on the final day. But yeah, we can't. The opening can't take credit for that, I would say. But he ended up losing, like like the, the game that ended up costing him the the, the, the final was, was also a Caro, I think, right? But that was in the Blitz. That wasn't in the Rapid. Uh, but, but he was more or less dead lost in that game straight out of the opening. Yeah. Um, mm. But yeah, I, th- I thought in particular the choice of Caro was uh, like a declaration that he is not really very much interested in equalizing. He is very much interested in uh, in getting uh, uneven fighting positions, even if they are, strictly speaking, uh, wars for black. This is the Caro Khan we're talking about where after E5, yeah, he played C5 once. He also played Bishop F5 yeah. and then some provocative stuff. What do you, but what I did believe... you think about what did you think about that b- before we start start getting games? And we ah okay, there's ah, we well, there is a Caro Khan. Caros today, and here we go indeed. Yeah, but that's that's Caros Magnus with white, white yeah. knight D2, and queen to C7. Whoa, okay, that looks I mean, like a bullet game of mine, hoping for knight F3, bishop G4, and saying ha ha, I got my bishop here. But then if they make some other move like C3 or H3, I wouldn't know what to do. Probably. Our team have put more thought into this. Yeah, you would have to assume that he, he, he has not just decided to play queen c7 randomly. But yeah, even even after bishop knight g knight f3 bishop g4, it's not as if this sort of instantly not exactly goes. winning here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like but bishop d3. Yeah. That's another sound waiting move, just stopping bishop g4 and saying your move, sir. And now d e ninety four. Why is this yeah. a better version for I'm, I'm really interested in how he is planning to follow this up because like all of the normal moves you can make in this position appear to lead to like slightly inferior versions of the normal Karos. If you play knight d7, bishop g3 is sort of the absolute main line against knight d7 and nobody plays queen c7 there. So he goes bishop f5. Uh, this makes some sense, I suppose. You know, I'm assuming he wants to play... Uh, a kind of a Rubinstein French via this move order. I'm expecting this bishop to be traded for the knight on e4. We can even force it with white here with both knight f6 and knight d6 check, but we don't have to because the assumption has to be black takes on e4 uh, on his own. 
And then it's a very solid but somewhat passive position. Not my dream position out of the opening against somebody like Magnus. Well, not somebody like Magnus, Magnus specifically. Uh, I wouldn't really be uh, all that happy about playing uh, Rubinstein-type positions against Magnus, positions which normally feature very little counterplay for black, and you just have to hold your shape and uh, you know not do very much. Magnus seems quite committed to getting this bishop to trade itself, because knight h4 begging for that move, and here it comes. He does like his bishops. Now, yeah, White lost some time getting the structure. Might not. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's interesting that uh, Magnus felt obliged to actually force the trade because obviously going knight h4 uh, does lose you a lot of time, but um, you still you still end up having a position like like we have on the screen where White will be safely ever so slightly better for the rest of the game. Uh, and uh, Atomic Morphe does point out a relevant bit saying that this did win Artemiev half a minute uh, just by virtue of Magnus kind of staring at the screen and thinking, what the hell is this? Uh, it's not, the, it's, it's, it's not you know, a moot point at all. It's a, it's a valuable half a minute. Probably does not work for more than once, but will work for one game. Also, if you really wanted to stop this lethal queen c7 idea, you could develop the knight here. If we match by d takes e4, you would recapture and you would have stopped queen c7 because you could take the pawn. Line. That is, that is, yeah, very, very valid point. And, and Magnus, unsurprisingly, just instantly offers this uh, queen trade. Uh, the end game is genuinely quite nice for white. So well, understandable, Artemiev says no. Even though I think Artemiev in general doesn't mind playing uh, playing end games, he is one of the uh, the people I think who are the most comfortable uh, playing dry technical positions from the get-go. I think in that respect he's quite similar to Magnus himself. Uh, but now that the, the queens have not come off, Artemiev says, uh, please castle kingside so I can start some h6, g5 nonsense. Uh, the way the pieces are positioned. It's, it might not even be entirely nonsense. Doesn't look actually, like nonsense at all, no? Yeah, yeah it might, might actually like be it. quite annoying, yeah. It's Magnus does not seem eager to castle into it. I don't know if you can go bishop d2, long castles. But... Yeah, you could you could try castling long, but that that, occup that takes up some time, and black will probably also play h6, g5, and then bishop f4. And, uh, yeah. It's a kind of a, once again, very similar. It's, it looks more like a French than it does the, the uh, Cairo, and uh, it's not a particularly bad French, because white did, did kill off some time having to play knight h4 and then knight f3 back. If this doesn't look like a Cairo, what does though? Bishop d2 played, yeah. he does want to castle this way. And yeah, let's see, let's see what our team thinks about this. H6 g5 does look natural because there's a queen on h4, which is kind of inviting that type of counterplay. You could also maybe make an argument for some sort of knight b6, knight c4 type ideas. They do look a bit artificial, but maybe not that stupid. In particular, if white continues with the plan of castling long, you might get some counterplay on the queen side. The world champion with the white pieces does not look fully awake yet. He's playing kind of slowly, more than a minute down on the clock. And we've seen him start slowly in the last match that was a UNI commentating on the match against Masud Lu. I can't recall. Maybe, maybe it was. But then, oh no, I don't think it was us. But then he picked up speed. It was two and a half, two and a half. And he won like... 10 games in a row. Won't happen today. The 10 games in a row. Yeah, probably probably not. Yeah, H6, G5 did happen, but you can't really play bishop before 4 because the pawn on uh, A7 was hanging. And Magnus replies with a very concrete move, H4, which I don't honestly quite understand. Where does the knight... Ah, G4, bishop F... No. What is he planning to do after G4 here? Uh, maybe maybe knight he G4? can play knight g4. I, I, I thought knight b6 was very strong, but queen takes a7 still exists. Yeah, I was very confused because I thought knight b6 just forces very favorable trades for black, but it doesn't. Uh, and now we we get a temp. Yeah, we still have to allow knight b6, though. This, this should be fine for black, I assume. I guess he wants queen a5 and then maybe argue a6 made the structure slightly shakier. But 
Mm, yeah, even even Queen B3 is not completely unreasonable. I don't think you can take on D4 twice. It seems a bit over optimistic to uh, to go for the pawn grab. So I guess Black just establishes some sort of a blockade. You're not even obliged to take on D4. Honestly, you could just ignore all of that. Ugh, he chose your move. I'm hurt. Queen B3, King B8. Yeah, sort of really inviting G3. But I guess the knight goes to d5 very soon, so bishop f4 never really materializes, you know, whichever, whichever knight, yeah. Strange position, I don't quite know what to think of it. I do like the fact that Magnus included h4 and g4, because the bishop on d2 is a lot more alive now. Uh, that's a, 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 like this, this little decision which is very easy to miss there. The pawn on f2 was hanging, many people would have autopiloted something which protected the pawn on f2, but Magnus... Uh, spots uh, uh, an idea of uh, generating some weaknesses on the king side. Now black has to think about the pawn on h6, and if he goes h5, bishop g5 will become an option. Not going to happen. Artemiev has two minutes left. Carlsen has one minute. The computer bar, which you can see next to the little board, giving you the evaluation of the current position on the board says it's completely equal so we have some drama yeah so far i think the the most interesting part of this game is that artemiev appears to be just much faster than uh than uh, magnus in the early running obviously you know sample size not huge but uh, up until the moment he he spent half a minute to play knight fd7 a move i don't entirely understand uh, he seemed to be very much in control over uh, on the clock. Ah, he's going after the queen, actually. That's kind of cute. Yeah, he's he's going uh, knight d7 with the intention of uh, moving the bishop away from c5, and now knight c5 is a bit of an annoying uh, Ugh, threat. It's very unpleasant. I'm also being informed the bar is not on yet. We'll switch on for the next game. Knight takes e6. He has to give a piece. This does not look fully healthy, even if he wins another pawn with all these pieces on the board. Isn't white just much worse? Definitely worse. I don't know if uh, if much worse, but probably yeah. With 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 this amount of pieces still left, uh, this is not very attractive. If the queens somehow come off, uh, white probably is reasonably uh, reasonably okay. But uh, yeah, getting them off the board will be a difficult task. I'm guessing he just didn't like the position after ninety seven at all. I mean, I mean ninety seven followed by bishop d six specifically, and he didn't see anything uh, more attractive than this. But uh, yeah, and also he didn't include rook takes d8. And now where does the queen go after rook dg8? I didn't really like not taking on d8 there. Uh, but maybe he found other tactical issues with the rook trade. Uh, I would be really worried about rook dg8 here because you have to play something like queen h3 and all of your pieces become misplaced. Knight g4 is a problem. Knight c4 is a problem. Queen f4 check is now constantly threatened. Now black will start like actively looking for ways to sacrifice on b2 and give mate and uh ah yeah he, he gets to trade the queens though now queen h2 is clever queen h2 is a move i think it is very very easy to to, to miss and yeah, that solves i think a vast majority of white's problems actually yeah he must have overlooked this because yeah it's yeah, hugely in white's favor to get the queens off you you probably still pick black here because the white pieces are somewhat discoordinated but yeah, that was that was a major major turnaround there. That uh, the the queens were allowed to come off. Knight e five, bishop e four. It's it's actually still kind of annoying for white because the the bishop on e four looks gorgeous, but it's very difficult to start moving your kingside pawns, and the rook on h two continues being a bit of an idiot. Uh, so definitely, definitely favored for uh, Vladislav, but should be should be difficult to win. They're both down to seconds. They do get one second extra per move, but six seconds versus sixteen. At this point in the first game, it's also about who's yeah. more alert. What's going on? He takes the pawn. There's yeah, no I think, direct I think this is threats. now this is now back to uh, back to being close to completely winning for black. Somehow this did not go particularly well. Uh, we'll end up being three against two on one side, which is well, actually, even that is not that clear. It will take some work to to even pick up the h pawn. 
I think Vladislav could have considered not taking on G4 twice so quickly, but they are playing on very, very little time. So I think it's uh, it's very easy to uh, do that when you're sort of autopiloting. Now I think King C7 and Knight G4 does win the does win the H pawn. Yeah, you could probably even go King B7, but it's not required. Yeah, and uh, in a in a practical game, sometimes there's there are some issues to. Why doesn't he take the pawn? Ah, he wants he to wants, go for mate. Yeah, yeah, he wants to go for not the C3 pawn, which is yeah, which is very understandable. Yeah, now this has to be a very comfortably winning position, of course. Uh, yeah, if uh, if this goes sort of true to how it's supposed to go from here, this will be a very very nice start for for Artemiev winning game one with Black. Uh, Magnus will continue, of course, but uh, yeah, you you don't save very many of these with two second increment. It's one second increment, right? Maybe yeah. Not it's, that this yeah, it's, changes uh, your point. Yeah, it does change it somewhat, but yeah. Once again, Artemiev has very very good mechanics. I don't I don't really think uh, there is much of a shot here for Magnus to to save this. Eventually, the pawn on B three just gets rounded up, and yeah, Magnus does resign. Rook F two check. Knight T four was coming, and Artemiev takes the lead. One zero. Carlsen loses the first game. Keeps losing in his 30s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, although, I mean, this this already is, well, it's becoming a very worrying, uh, very worrying, statistically relevant thre uh, trend, uh, having, having lost the... Uh, well, depending on when he was born on the day, uh, this may be one or two or maybe even three games lost past his birthday. You know, you, you, we would have to talk to his mom on the exact details of how many games he played against Wesley when, while being 30 already. Yep, we'll be right back. Just looking to get the life engine added here. One second. Yeah, I'll I'll do some blindfold commentating. Uh, Artemiev is playing a symmetrical Grunfeld with, uh, uh, which is something I think Magnus himself has done on occasions, uh, and uh, shouldn't really be any particular trouble for for black these types of positions. Uh, which you, I mean, they will be up on the screen in a moment, but um, it's what he does normally. It's not his strategy against Magnus specifically. It's what he does normally. He goes for these, you know, somewhat unassuming uh, opening setups. I don't think I've ever seen him, you know, try to kill anybody straight from the opening. He very often goes for the the quieter lines uh, with the intention of maybe fighting for a small edge. But he does handle those positions very, very well. So I think it's uh, it it suits him quite. Quite nicely. Here we are, knight to e4. Yeah, somewhat, somewhat typical setup. The the, the run of the a pawn down the board is, I think, uh, an accepted way of uh, dealing with these positions for black. Uh, uh, these days, you want to uh, open the a file for potential additional simplifications and so on. Uh, the big issue is what to do with the knight on b8, because normally the moment you play knight bd7, white very, very happy to go cd5, cd5, and the knight on d7 ends up being somewhat misplaced. If white ever goes cd5, cd5, of course you would like to develop it to c6, which is why I think you see Magnus postpone you know, any decision with the knight on b8 until the situation uh, with the pawn structure is resolved. Black also quite often actually just takes on f3 of his own volition and says... Uh, this type of a kind of a Grunfeld slash Slav uh, setup with the two bishops against the bishop and knight is quite safe. Queen b4 is an interesting choice, though, kind of really trying to get black to commit to something. Um, might be awkward. I don't see a comfortable move straight away. Maybe rook a7 is playable, but you're, you're never entirely happy doing that. Magnus taking his time yet again, surprised by this queen to be four move. I 
I still have a feeling that he is not fully ready for battle just yet. But usually he does find his footing at some point. And the good news for the world champions, these matches are long. How many games do they play on average in these things? Like 25, 30? Yeah, I think they end up playing something like eight, five plus one games and uh, maybe eight to ten, three plus one games and then an additional in the same vicinity of uh, of bullets. So yeah, I think 25 is a is a decent estimate, uh, plus minus a few. Uh, so of course, I mean it's extremely uh, it's extremely long, and uh, losing losing game one is not a huge big deal. But it sort of sets the tone. I'm you know you nobody nobody really likes starting a match like this with a loss. Wisdom. We have another match coming up today. Hikaru Nakamura is playing against Fedoseyev at 6 p.m. But that will be handled by the trusted, the legendary commentary team of Tanya Sachdev and Peter Leko. So our shift ends after this one. And then Tanya and Peter will take over, I guess, like half an hour after that. Maybe we'll, we'll make a fluid transition. Maybe we'll say hi to them. I'm not sure how it's going to go. But there will be lots of chess action today. And back to the action on the board. Karlsson had to give up the A-file. Is he in trouble? Well, I mean, Knight A6 does block the A-file reasonably well. It's not the most, you know, not, not the sexiest square for that piece, but it, it does its blocking job. Uh, so, and, and also there is this option, which I um, somehow discounted, but yeah, I don't know why. It's It seems fine. You can now start uh, taking some some pressure off the center. You could maybe even trade in some order. You can trade both uh, the... Uh, both pairs of uh, C and D pawns, and then go knight C six. So should be should be okay for Magnus. Feels like into B five. Yeah, I think I would probably start with D takes C four because C takes D four. Uh, I, I thought I had some issues, but both probably end up leading to very very similar positions, which are. If, if anything, they are slightly better for white, but should be very, very level in my understanding. Yeah. You probably do have to take on d4, though. Allowing d5 would be would be a mistake because the bishop on b2 is now not hanging anymore. The queen on b5 has connected to it. Um, you do have some kind, you know, I was about to say you have some jumps with the queen, but actually the, queen, the rook on e8 would get in trouble if you tried attacking the attacking the knight on f3. So yeah, the, the assumption is c takes d4 is logical. You could maybe try maintaining the pressure somehow, but queen c6 maybe is a move? Not entirely sure. Queen c6 does appear to be something you could definitely consider doing, even though the knight on f3 is not hanging immediately, because once again, the rook on e8 will hang. But it does stop d5 from happening. Yeah. This is six plate. Solid. Yeah, maybe rook a8 is a decent-ish reply to it. Uh, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, seems seems like a, a normal enough move. Rook a probably black just goes b6, yeah. Yeah, yeah just to show yeah. piece is not hanging because the rook is under attack. Yeah. We, we haven't generated a threat yet, but it will become a threat eventually. Rook A8 played, I think B6 is fine here. I was trying to figure out how to reply to this. I think leaving it on A8 uh, unchallenged. Yeah, he does go Rook F8. I was about to say that this looks uh, this looks risky, but Magnus disagrees. And now the Knight on F3 actually is hanging because the Rook has been uh, moved away from a square where it was on prees potentially. Wow, look at your French. Knight to e1, the knight retreats. Yeah, takes, takes. We, I guess we take on d4 first. Um, but yeah, should still end up being very, very level. It's very difficult to prove black is, uh, black is actually playing for a win. I guess you take on b5, you go knight d7. But after rook a7, that rook is a bit too active, I think, for, uh, for black to have a, a legitimate uh, winning chance. Knight f4, knight d3, knight c5 comes to mind. Yeah, that'd be 693. Wow. 
You strong players, you're good with the with the night maneuvers very quickly. Although knight c8, knight d6 yeah. is very strong from Magnus as well. There, yeah, I, I miss that idea, and maybe I've I've not been optimistic enough for Magnus. This might actually be uh, somewhat problematic for White. Although I still expect uh, Vlad to be able to hold this. We should also mention Carlson once again struggling a little with his time management. 20 seconds against two minutes. Yeah. I I've not been watching the, the, the video feed, but yeah, I wonder you've made some references to, you know, hungry and sleepy. I wonder where he is and whether whether this is maybe a bit too early or a bit too late in the day for him, but we never know. It's never too late in the day for him. That much we do know. <laughs> that is a that is a very valid point, yeah. But globe trotter that he is. Um, On to b six. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised by rook a five specifically because b six followed by ninety six does look a bit annoying. You, you might have some issues protecting that pawn on b five now. You might actually have to go like full passive rook, like rook a1, rook b1, or rook a4, rook b4, but then you're not really enjoying life all that much because uh, the black rook could go like a8, a5 and start attacking the attacking the weaknesses. Um, and the, the situation on the clock has evened out quite a bit. Artemi is still slightly ahead, but well, nowhere near as much as he was. Clearly not happy, burning a minute and a half here over the last three, four moves, mm -hmm. going passive. Yeah, probably you prob you're probably still holding you go 95 and then 97 is also an issue a little bit, but um, yeah, rook c1, why has he played rook c1? Why is he forcing white to go to go 97? Maybe he wants knight c8 and he is planning to catch that knight somehow, but I don't think he, I don't think he's... Knight, the knight can jump. Yeah, the knight can get out on its own, yeah. Strange endgame, and uh, also, I mean, hard for me to believe that Magnus would meet, meet uh, sorry, uh, miss 97, but uh, didn't look obvious to me to, uh, you know, the idea to try to force White to make that move. Rook A4. You hinted that Magnus might be traveling. There, there was this birthday picture. I'm not sure if it was. Real. It looked like he was in some sunny setting, getting a nice feast. Do you have any intel Whoa. where he is? And he is now winning, I think. Rook a8 was a bit of a problem. Oops. Yeah, that that wasn't great. There was yeah. The, those two pieces never come out now yet. Yeah, just the b pawn starts running, and yeah, that's uh, that de-escalated quickly. We no longer really have to discuss this game anymore. <laughs> rook a8, rook c8 was uh, unfortunate. One one. So do you know where he is? Um, not, not, not uh, 100% with any kind of a certainty. But yeah, I also, I also saw some pictures which did indicate he might not be in Europe because Europe generally does not have that weather in early December. <laughs> Canary Islands or Madeira? Yeah, I mean... Tough. It's the it's the <laughs> the extension of our normal dialogue of I will play this against any move right you <laughs> you're doing the same to me only with geography. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, but it was hard because weather not great. Yeah, weather. How many hours of daylight do you have over there? In uh, I mean, we we are probably in a similar boat, right? But it's slightly more grim here than it is in Hamburg, but it's 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 pretty similar. It's dark Pretty outside dark already, yeah. It's dark outside, I and mean, it's like 4 p.m., so... Um, it's not much fun. This line is well known. It's not supposed to be very much for white. There's knight 3 Countering with yeah. knight f4, e5. White usually gets some micro edge in some endgames where he captures this bishop. That's not supposed to be a theoretical problem. Yeah, I did that against Anish uh, in the in the second game of our semi-final in the Baku World Cup. But I specifically, I needed the draw with white. You normally do this when you need a draw. It's it's not the most ambitious line to play against the Karo. But uh, sometimes white does get a little bit of something, something um, 
very rarely though because uh, black has a very sound structure the the white pieces start off on sort of wrong squares and problem is this this idiot is misplaced mm -hmm. and in yeah. the time you need to put it somewhere black can either exchange a bishop or you gain some squares so it's hard to play for anything much yeah, and bishop d6 of four already here does look like it should just completely equalize because once that pair of bishops comes off, uh, it's it becomes well nigh impossible to prove you you will ever have anything at all. Yeah, five also not not unreasonable, really fighting hard uh, against uh, that knight activating. Looks riskier though, right? Allowing h4, h5. Yeah, it, it definitely is a much more committal move, but I think it's uh, fine. Uh, should be okay with the rook on h8 fighting against all of those things. You probably are never in real trouble. Polo Vartorman is saying 30 is the new 50. Couldn't agree more. 40 is the new 70. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or some such. I've I've gotten some very touching reactions to that picture I posted on Twitter, uh, where uh, you know, sort of uh, eight nine year old kids were asked to describe what they think happens to people when they reach forty. Uh, I think some people mistakenly thought this is what I think happens to people when they reach forty. But what do uh, first the kids and then you think? Well, I mean, in a way, probably what I think about it is even even darker than what the kids think. But the kids, I can I can quote you something from uh, from the picture. Hang on a sec, let me just find it. Uh, but it was something about I had to quit my job because I can no longer go up and down hills, which I thought was a very touching, uh, very touching uh, detail. Specifically, hills somehow were mentioned. Uh, yeah, I am 40. I am turning old. I just left work because I cannot manage going up and down hills. I know I will soon die. Um, kids are, they that could you know, be a direct quote of mine. <laughs> uh, kids, kids speak truth to power or whatever that is. Yeah. They... So the bishops have come off the board, the knights have good squares. Nothing to worry too much about for Mr. Artemiev, is there? Probably not, although with that trade, why did get uh, some, at least, like you can describe them as pseudo-active moves in, and, uh, you know, he, Magnus could play bishop b6 check here, which is, you know, maybe if you give enough checks, one of them ends up being made, which is like a working, you know, a, a theory you could start with, and you know, it, it, it's it's going to st stand you in reasonably good stead if you like persevere. Yeah. Also, Bishop two ninety five. You could start making like Bishop two probably is not a particularly good move here, but if he ends up playing Bishop two after knight d five, the threat of knight f four is kind of annoying. He might he might still be mm, even needing to be precise. It's that knight on g three. Yeah. Now knight d five which I assume will be put played here. quite. Yeah, put it on sort of any normal square. Yeah. H3, knight f4, rook g1, or bishop f1, or whatever it is he is planning to play after knight f4. Getting on plate again, Magnus. Yeah, it's, it's really not, not up. that nice. This might actually be, oh no, he has rook d1 check and then bishop f1, otherwise he allows, he allows knight d3 check. So this does keep things intact at least, and then I guess he eventually will come out of the corner without losing any material, but... Um, Lawrence Trent is dropping his truth bombs on all the channels, but as I informed him in person, and by in person I mean in text earlier today, I am going to ghost Lawrence for a while. There, sometimes there's too much Lawrence in your life. Have you had that experience, Peter? Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely, uh, uh, what's the word? Unacquainted with it. Pawn to f4, knight to e4, pawn to f3. Yeah, definitely slightly better for black. Probably still ends up being uh, being a draw somehow, but 
Um, Black is doing all the early, uh, the early pushing in this game. Rookie one is clever though. Yeah, having seen Rookie one, I am now revising this to white. White never actually loses, uh, and yeah, the, the the night jumps might actually become annoying in the other direction as well. Wow, my package with golden milk has arrived. I just thought with what I wanna have that information. Golden milk? Golden milk. What is that? Some, I don't know, some hipster thing. I think it contains it? kukuma. Ah, yeah, that, I've, I've heard of uh, I've heard of that idea. That actually does sound quite attractive to my... You Very know, attractive. Hipster sensibilities. 96 check. Yeah, I think the trick here is after king g6, you can go knight g5 and then rook e6 takes g6 and everything and sort of supports each other and white even wins some material. But obviously, king d6 is by no means forced. You can go even in just the other direction altogether, go king b6, go away from checks. He does go, go, go king d6, which is a bit interesting because how do you react to this now? Rook h6 maybe, but you, you don't really enjoy putting your pieces on such passive squares. Rook H to plate, knight for check. Interesting that he didn't go rook 6 check there. I really expected rook 6 check. I didn't really see anything wrong with it either. Just go after the g6 pawn, why wouldn't you? Maybe he was worried about horses, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, knight 4 is completely fine, but it doesn't... Like, it's hard for me to imagine how this is a winning attempt, and I've, I've not really seen Magnus turn down something which is maybe a slightly risky but still a winning attempt in favor of uh, something safe but pedestrian. Yeah, there are some very uh, cutting edge questions being asked in, uh, in chats. <laughs> we like that. Fun stuff is upset with my gold milk order. Um, sorry, fun stuff. I was aware milk topics are often controversial. I thought gold milk was safe because you could mix it with oat milk, with almond milk, with any type of milk. But I was wrong. I would like to apologize to any milk enthusiast that are offended by my order. That was not my intention. I will now shut up and take some time to reflect. Well, Peter tells us who is better and why. Nobody, right? Draw? Yeah, I think I think this ends up being a draw. Yeah. Pawns keep on coming off the board and nobody is on two seconds. So hard to imagine this suddenly becoming a, a huge, huge dogfight. But I mean, okay, well, yeah, Magnus disagrees. Magnus says, well, give me that juicy mating attack with only two pieces on the board somehow. <laughs> and Artemius says no, not allowing rook a7 check. Uh, actually quite clever this knight c8 move. You could also yeah go for some trades after rook a3, which I, yeah, rook g1 as well, yeah. Might just be a repetition now. Hmm. Probably Magnus is not very enth enthused about the entire thing. Interesting that he allows knight c5 rook f4 check though. This is why he's played this. Has Magnus missed rook f4 check? Is he playing with fire? Well, I mean, even if you do give up the pawn on f3, I assume you still hold in the long run. But yeah, this doesn't look right. This doesn't look right at all. And now after knight d5, you are rook genuinely worse. Yeah. yeah, rook a6, rook a7, maybe not. No, rook a6, knight e6. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not worse at all. Yeah, maybe he's still fine. Barely. But yeah, that didn't really look like a very convincing winning attempt, honestly. Considering he could have just repeated instead of all this, but yeah, and Artemio says no, no draw for you for now. But yeah, ninety six, and then uh, Rook C six maybe is playing. Oh, no. Draw for you now. Draw for draw for you now. Yeah, D six Rook C six. Hang on a second. Like, seriously, Rook C six here. Why isn't he doing that anyway? Doesn't matter. He's thinking. It's hard to get more than draw. One and a half. One and a half. Yeah. So far. Uh, uh, 
so far very very level um our team of doing i mean the caro is doing wonders so far and uh the game he lost with white he he lost uh uh, maybe you can make an argument over pressing a little bit. So yeah, um, we expected a close one at least uh, at least in the first portion, and we are getting a close one. And yeah. and honestly, if, like if this gets to the bullet on on level footing, I I, I think Artemiev is one of the one of the people who could actually give Magnus a a, a run for his money in the in, in the bullet portion. Uh, he probably is pretty decent at it. Once again, I've I've no personal experience playing bullet against him, but my assumption would be he is uh, quite good at that. Yep, pawn to e4. Yeah, another man who's not bad at bullet is playing later today. Oh, absolutely, course, yeah. Bit of see if that's going to be another fun match. Yeah, both of those two, two gentlemen are. Decent, decent at bullet chess, I would say. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was my attempted humor that once again failed miserably. What is this game, Artemiev? Is he gonna go g4? Well, I think you're supposed to, and I think maybe this is Magnus. Well, this is why Magnus is playing this line because I, I am really not any kind of a hedgehog specialist at all. But my understanding is. It's very difficult to prove anything at all unless you actually start this uh, this type of a uh, play on the king side, and then a the game becomes very very unclear, and b also Magnus maybe feels that uh, uh, this type of a uh, uh, tactical contest is less to Artemio's liking uh, in terms of what he prefers to do on the chessboard. But yeah, I think I think Artemio knows enough to uh, to not try to pull punches here. If I just Sits on, uh, sits and does nothing for a while. You, you black ends up consolidating, and then I think these uh, these types of hedgehogs are completely fine for him. Yeah, let's see five bishop f two. Yeah, this is where you know the 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 number one Russian commentator of all time, Mister Sergei Shipov, would be the person to consult. He has written actual books on the hedgehog, and uh, I'm pretty sure this position in particular is. Uh, is covered there in great detail. I have no idea what you're supposed to play here. I'm pretty sure there's like in-depth theory here that it would help to know. Not just general, you know, blah, blah, but moves you, you absolutely have to make possibly exist here. I just don't know what they are. Is e5 one of these moves or is that suicide? Some knight of five? F, E, D, E, knight of five and then knight d5. That looks miserable, honestly. That, that looks very, H, very miserable. If h4 here... What do you do? I H5, just, maybe. I don't know. Like, <laughs> sometimes they do this H6, H4, H5 dance. I, it, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Very hard to, for me to, you know, figure out <laughs> when when we are supposed to expect what. Um, yeah, B4, 97, and then something. I was wondering about B4. B4 is a very committal move. Uh, yeah, before and then G5 actually makes a ton of sense. because G6 is coming. Yeah, G6. Wow. I mean... Uh, yeah, takes, takes. I guess we go ninety eight, so G6 at least doesn't come with a tempo. But then G6 is still very annoying. Also, Queen H5, bring a rook and checkmate could be an yeah, option. This is, uh, uh, as we've mentioned, like if, he, if White doesn't shirk from his responsibilities here and actually goes for the throat, this is a position which is very, very, uh, you know, it's very possible to for it to go completely off the rails for uh, for Black. Maybe you can go something like knight a g6, bishop f6, and claim you're not dead. But yeah, I don't know how that claim holds up against uh, you know the cold light of day. Knight eight plate. I'm curious. G6 splits out here. Yeah. Bishop f6. Bishop, six, uh, bishop h3, for instance. Like it does feel like it might start collapsing at any moment. Uh, the pawn on e6 is just so weak with the bishop on b7, never really connecting to it. So yeah, it was a clearly a bit of an experiment from Magnus, but so far you would have to assume it's 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 backfiring, uh, at least to a degree, because Artemiev is demonstrating that he knows he knows what you're supposed to do, and uh, I mean the position remains unclear for a blitz game. You, you can definitely 
uh, you know, if you if you manage to defend defend against the first wave, uh, why did have to give up the control over the e5 square and so on? So, uh, if you don't die in the next five moves with black here, your your position might start improving dramatically. But how exactly are you not supposed to die here? So you're saying if he makes it through the first wave, all of this just goes away? Uh, well, no. Yeah, we know that's not how any of this works, honestly, by this point, I think. I don't even see a move. It looks horrible. 95 yeah, played. I, yeah, I thought 95 and then just take with the rook. Just give up on e6 to, you know, bring some of your pieces together. But then Bishop even takes and then Bishop a tree without yeah. capturing. It all looks yeah. good. I think that's that's where I got to, and I kind of gave up on this idea. But I guess Magnus just couldn't find anything better. Yeah, GF rook f7, and I think knight e6, queen d7 is semi-playable for black. But bishop h3 here, I just don't know how to react to it. It looks like it's winning an exchange, honestly. It's not even it's not even a pawn. It feels like it's just collecting a ton of material. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is not going too well by uh, for for Magnus here at all. No, you never resigned here, uh, Akim, uh, come helping, but uh, you probably don't enjoy playing this position. Maybe you can go queen c4, bishop b6, knight f3, check, but I guess queen king h1 in that final position is just winning, right? It's kind of cute, but it doesn't actually work if you continue the line for one more ply. I thought queen takes f3, but then queen takes e6. Yeah, that, that was why I was so proud of this stupid tactic, because uh, that was... Uh, Rook f6 played. Yeah, but then we, we, we take on e6. Uh, even knight takes is not that stupid, honestly, but I think bishop takes is, is fine. Uh, bishop takes, I guess Magnus plans to take, take and play queen d7, but uh, there is no real counterplay on the king side there, and white is a full exchange up, so I'm very sure the machine is screaming that white is close to winning, but yeah. The, it is, you can see from the bar, it's past seven, closing in on eight. Knight takes e6 plate. And Magnus Carlsen having a rough time here. As mentioned, this match I saw against Masud Lu, score was also two and a half, two and a half, and then he caught fire. But yeah, ninety six also looks okay. very, very attractive. Just trying to win, uh, trying to win without giving up on the, the light control. If queen c four, how do you win ninety five? Just or how does this go? Yeah, I thought ninety five, but I don't really see queen why queen c one doesn't lose. Yeah, why it does lose? I mean, maybe it's a maybe he's selling it, uh, selling it a little bit short. Yeah, just queen c one ninety seven, king f seven here. Uh, there's also knight of three check in every single position, but I think white probably has good replies to it. I thought queen c one. Oh, Maybe knight f6. Well, he goes rook g6 check first. I guess he wants to go bishop takes d5, because otherwise I don't really understand why we've included this move. Give Am the I missing queen. something? Am I missing? No, but that, that loses. Like, I don't really understand why he did that. What's the reply to king h1 here? <sighs> I guess you can still take on... Ah, yeah, I, and bishop g3 as well, yeah. Or maybe he thought knight takes f6 was the biggest threat, so he's sidestepping that. He's sort of prioritizing defending against that over defending against knight takes e7. Uh, knight, yeah, you end up down material anyway. Yeah, this is resignable. Takes, takes, and uh, yeah, just a, just a full piece down. Yeah, full piece down, and white continues attacking. Has he got crushed? Yeah, you don't I see him getting goes... crushed like that from start to finish very often. Yeah, I th he, he, he went for a line which is... You, you have Dodgy. to say has has a dodgy reputation and did not really have anything prepared there and got just swiped off the board, frankly. Um, did not play around swipe. Cricket? <laughs> no, no, that would be did not play around sweep. Hmm. That's uh, that's a whole other game. What's that then? Tinder. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Uh, yeah. This is a position usually very much to Carlson's liking. Just the type of play, these Slav, slow Slavs, where you get the two bishops and then, of course, you can make many different moves here. But I believe bishop e4 is supposed to be somewhat more challenging. Not saying better, but at least to more complex positions. Well, bishop g6, 
not provoking f3 gives white a bit more choice and i'm not sure carlson goes for a very quick long castles plan there are a great many options along the way yeah this this definitely is a position i know absolutely nothing about so uh, enjoying my moment of silence quite a bit here i can't add anything to this conversation apart from saying that you know it looks solid for black but very often becomes less so as the as the game progresses i wonder where he's planning to castle or if he's planning to castle at all uh vlad i mean dc kind of indicates that he wants to yeah i was going to say the other thing altogether like i just yeah I, i'm i'm clueless here this should be a little bit better for white though uh, and and also sort of entirely up Magnus's street, this type of position. Black will eventually play King B8, push C65, and we'll have this uh, kind of a symmetrical position. Or E6, yeah, E5 probably more sensible than C5 for the King on B8, yeah? Allowing Knight B5 doesn't look particularly good. Is your moment of silence over? Well, the they've at least decided on something. I really didn't know where he was supposed to castle, but now that he's castle queenside, I can say uh, uh, something about it. Specifically that it looks very risky. It's and highly like unpleasant for black. No, this yeah. DC long castle is also not a typical combination of moves. Usually after DC, you want to follow it up with a quick C5 or E5, and for C5, yeah. you want the king on the other side. So I F4 don't is very strong. This. Yeah, I, F4, F4, I did not anticipate, but specifically even E4, E5 is just such a huge threat. Yeah. Now you, you might lose the uh, no, you would like, need c5 here, but you can't with the king here. So uh, yeah, yeah. If, if didn't if go well. Bishop c7, and you you claim that it's not going to be that easy to uh, to progress much further. But yeah, this is not fun at all. White has a very very pleasant position here, and sort of all the trumps. I guess the bishop from c4 gets rerouted to f3. It's not necessary, but in particular, if he gets pushed away. I think bishop two f three is very very logical. It's a good square for the bishop. The other one goes to e three or or c one, and then we start looking for ways to to improve further. This did not go well so far. But Carlson is behind in the match. Two and a half, one and a half. Artemiev too strong to mess around, as chat correctly indicates. It looks like he's done messing around, playing main openings, going for the throat now. Yeah, this is the, the the first sort of properly good position Magnus had in uh, in this match. I think. Mm, I mean, the, the positions he got in w w with White in the Caros were fine, but nothing nothing special. And uh, uh, yeah, the black ones were. I mean, one was okay, and one was a non-starter. He just got absolutely demolished in that in that hedge hog. Yeah. Pawn to a three. Ah, he doesn't want to take bishop a5, asking for b4. Interesting. That's very, very interesting to me. Like, I would just snap, accept that sacrifice. I think that position is much better for white. Also, can you start with e5? And knight d5 and takes, rook takes is point. And then b4 in that position. Yeah. Isn't that even stronger? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that, that looks wrong to me. I guess he just really just liked, I mean, having played bishop before, he really just liked the, even the thought of taking on c3 and... Mm -hmm. Figure it. I might as well just continue with the. Let's you know, if, if we want to be charitable, let's describe it as a semi bluff. Um, you and your poker terminology. Mm, Bishop e1. Magnus uh, not interested in any drama. Saying my position is so good, I shall not weaken my king. But also, I think maybe he says this actually improves the threat of b4 because the pawn on d4 is now protected. And if you want mm. to go something like knight c8 or knight d7, if no, knight c8, e5, knight d5 is playable. That's a weird choice by Magnus. Uh, I really thought you could have found a way to just immediately pick up that piece and be quite happy about things, but um, decides not to get involved with the calculations at all. Knight c8 looks logical. Knight e7, e5, he would be forced to go like knight e8 or something, and that looks ugly, but uh, knight c8, e5, knight e5, if that's playable, that maybe is not that bad. I 
Artemiev falling behind on the clock, which is often the case. If you get a bad position, you also get a bad position on the clock because you have to spend more time trying to hang in there. Yeah, absolutely. Lethal yeah. combination. Not not great to uh, uh, to get that that combo against Magnus at all. Yeah. I'm guessing if since he's still thinking, I, I think I spotted why knight c eighty five ninety five doesn't quite work. So that's that's why the move hasn't been played yet. Uh, we can go knight takes rook takes and then bishop c four wins the exchange. And yeah, that position is bad for black. I'll show the line briefly. Yeah. And and black has been incapable of protecting the bishop on a five. Has to do this, and yeah, that's eventually lost. You can you can rook d seven plate after prolonged thought. Hmm. Will he go before? Yeah, you can go before. Not? You can once again do what you were suggesting, which I quite like, including e5 and then going before. Uh, also looks very logical. Now but after knight d5. Well, we take on d5 and we go take before. Him before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a piece. I, I really don't see what black gets for it. I think e5, he, he will have to go something like knight e8 or knight h5 or something. <clears throat> yeah, knight e8, I guess, before bishop takes before and hope that the pawn on d4 falls anyway, but. That should be a very good position for white somehow. And CP Coutard is here. Welcome, CP Coutard. Peter, now that CP Coutard is here, maybe it's also time for you to tone down the cursing just a little bit. It's a family Never. Show. Never. Wow. Those are fighting words, CP Coutard. I, I did ask him nice. Knight h5. Yeah, now you also have issues with like after rook f1 there will be an additional threat of g4 which is will will be kind of comical because white will be threatening to win two different light pieces on the on the on the rim yeah i don't like knight h5 much yeah that doesn't look that doesn't look great for black i guess maybe you take on c3 and go g5 now because you really are struggling to keep that knight afloat otherwise uh, i was just counting how many squares these two pieces are apart Seven, probably, according to chat. I, th I think it's zero because you are supposed to like glue the A and H, uh, A and H uh, file. That's not how it works. You can't go from H to A if you're a knight. G5 played. Yeah, he had to do this. But you do G3. Probably Maybe G this is not that horrible. G3 with ah GF G4 still still mm -hmm. wins the piece. Yeah, G3 is clever then. Yeah, G3. I guess he goes G6 in reply, uh, opening up the G7 square for this knight. I mean, it looked very attractive for White to begin with, but now that uh, you know, if we if we're not winning by force here uh, with White, we may have given up at least some parts of our advantage. Although still, I mean, Bishop before D6 check and. Uh, Clearly, it's still White who will be enjoying this much more. But oh. CP Carter is wondering, what did I miss? Any Peter swearing? Yeah, there's been quite a bit, but I hope we'll get under the control now. CP Carter is also saying, Peter never complains. I that is not a factual check. statement. That is accurate. Um, no, Peter has complained 434 times, according to Nightbot. So that's not factual. Yeah, that's... Uh, 28, that's a is Artemiev hanging in there? That's a contrafactual statement. Yeah, we're we, yeah G three played as we sort of expected. I still think G six is more or less forced because you do have to, you know, start generating squares for rook d four bishop d six check is not ideal. No, okay, yeah. there are the wins, but that's good enough. G six covers the horsey. F G. Yeah, Magnus finally goes F G. I guess bishop d six will be included at some point, but it it will get sort of smoked out with king with knight c8 eventually and uh, uh, you do have to control like, like you, you absolutely need to make sure that the knight doesn't land on f5 yeah and, uh, yes of course h4 g4 yeah knight the, at least might make it to d5 after a long voyage yeah and Our team uh, are thinking mean, in there white's position does look fantastic but black is Actually, a pawn up here, and uh, not without resources. Uh, you, you do need to uh, get somewhere quite quickly here with white because yeah, if you don't, the horses yeah. start jumping. It's not so bad. It looks very crabby for uh, for black, but no, no, not not much in the way of weaknesses apart from that pawn on f7. And yeah, you could play f6 or f5 here to 
start it's trying to solve it. Yeah. Artemiev showing his resilience. They're both down to their last seconds. So now. Yeah, if he if he gets away with reflexes. this one, it's going to be it's going to be just a, a huge huge turn on yeah nine ninety four. Black is winning. Black is winning. Times. Whoa, yeah. Magnus might just destroy whatever Caribbean island he's on if this continues like that. No, that's a very very tilt inducing game. If you lose if you lose a game like this with White, that's that's very very tilt inducing he's, because he he's not he, lost yet though. He he did pick up this pawn. Yeah, he probably actually saves this now. Back in yeah. business, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Queen B eight, Queen takes D six did not look did not look right. There must have been a way. Well, okay, White wins again. Uh, that's less tilt than this thing. That <laughs> like that's, uh, that's good news for Kokomo. Yeah, very uncharacteristic uh, uh, blunder by Vlad. Yeah, he did not have much time, but still, like you, you don't see him uh, blunder things like that very often. I think. Magnus yeah, is uh, King A1 is a safe construction. This bishop can break checks. Perpetual, yeah. Not a perpetual. And now white probably actually gives gives mate for the yeah, in particular after King B7, it feels to me like there there might be mate somewhere. Yeah, now we can pick up the pawn on C4, continuing uh, continuing to give checks. Yeah, just completely lost. This is it. Carlson wins. Bit of a roller coaster from a winning position to a bad position. To a drawn position, to win. Yeah, it had to be close to loss there for White for for a short period, and then uh, our team at first did not really convert properly, and then just left the knight on prees. And we see one b three, yeah, but our team doesn't do it to uh, to be very offbeat. He very often plays these types of dub- double fianchettas. I think it's uh, it's one of the things he uh, has been doing for a while. Seems to be enjoying. Who wouldn't enjoy this? Pawn to c4 before black goes c5. So this cannot yet be met by pawn to d4. Typical idea. And Magnus goes dc, bc, pawn to c5. As. Yeah, I normally have this position. With the Peter games, tempo down, no? Tempo down, yeah, exactly. I, I, I've I, actually gotten this with black tempo down, and I thought even that was playable. So I would be reasonably okay with. Uh, with getting uh, with getting this one, yeah. uh, Carlson knows this because he played this also tempo down against Aronian, went on to lose that game. However, yeah, I guess Artemiev just wants a structure. Yeah, it's a it's a tricky structure for Black because um, it it very much depends on how well you uh, you manage to uh, to develop. I'm slightly surprised Artemiev did not try playing knight e5 there. That that often is sort of the the underlying idea playing 95 as early as possible trying to make sure black never gets the queen c7 b6 bishop b7 setup which i think is the what you're supposed to be aiming for here uh, and if you do get all of those moves in you probably never really struggle in that game ever again but uh, yeah. evil sea monkey is asking is it just the most points by the end of the remaining time pretty much they play games with the time control they are currently playing as long as there's time on the clock. So there's 30 more minutes on the clock for the five plus one portion, which translate to probably three more games after this one or two, who knows? And then they do the same with three plus one, one plus one. Then they count the points. There's one point. Per yeah, there's no, there's no any kind of waiting attached to the, the longer time control games. It's just uh, one point per win in all three time controls. Queen D2, I guess maybe Artemiev doesn't like the idea of developing that knight towards G7 and then a 5 or a 6 squares. I don't quite see why you wouldn't take on G7 there. Queen D2 looked slightly artificial, didn't it? Yeah, I would have just I would have just snapped taken on G7 here. I wouldn't have been very unhappy about it at all. But yeah, he chooses to, at least for the time being, keep the bishops on the board. Uh, which, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I think the straight favors white quite a bit, so I wouldn't be... Uh, trying to delay it uh, artificially. Now, there's definitely a break between the the time controls. Uh, people are asking if it's uh, three hours non-stop. It ends it, it, it ends up being more like three and a half, three three forty with the yeah, it's a slightly longer break yeah. after the five plus one, like a fifteen minute break, coming up in roughly half an hour. Then a mm-hmm. shorter break after the three plus one. Yeah, three forty is a bit too much, but yeah, like. Definitely three and a half hours from start to finish. 
Um, yeah, Artemi is now back to uh, back to offering the same trade, and Magnus uh, keeps on saying, "If you want to trade, let's do it on the G7 square." I think eventually you have to. Um, so childish, one of you, just get rid of these bishops. Now you do it. Now you do it. There you go. Yeah, it's. Uh, it finally happened. It I'm finally that happened. Yeah. Bishop g4. I think black wouldn't actually mind getting that bishop off the board, traded for a knight, but uh, yeah, Artemiev says no. And yeah, this is actually kind of awkward for black because with the bishop semi stuck on g4, taking, taking, and going e6 is very, very awkward for black. Unless you can justify it tactically. I'm now trying to calculate. If we take, take, go e6, there are only two squares for the knight, right? And uh, knight e3 is a two-pawn sacrifice, not even a one-pawn sacrifice, but it might be correct. Uh, takes, takes, because knight c3, there is queen d4. This was my point. Uh, and I, yeah, I missed knight f4. Sorry, yeah, then it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. whatsoever. Neither four completely fell out of my field of vision. So minus probably because of that goes bishop e6 in this position, not e6. Uh, that's not a very pleasant position for black, I would say. H5 or a4, a5, or you know, some combination of the two. Cicadian is wondering if Magnus is burnt out from all the chess he played this year. I don't know. He hasn't looked his best in the skilling open, as mentioned, and he hasn't looked his best. Thus far today, I'm not sure he burns out from playing chess. I do think he likes it, and he, even if it's not a tournament, he plays quite a bit of fast time controls in his free or practice time. So I'm not sure if he's burned out or if it's, yeah, just a temporary off form thing. But he has not looked his usual devastatingly strong self in the skilling open. And by that, we still mean that he lost the finals by as narrow a margin as he could lose them. As for today, yeah, he's had a shaky start, but I see no reason to think that he's no longer the overwhelming favorite in this match. The scores are level, right? We we scores are level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he should still be uh, very much favored, but um, sort of conversely, there is nothing to suggest this will be a runaway victory for him. Uh, you kind of expect him to prevail, but uh, yeah, I. I don't think it will uh, it will be easy for him at all. A5, he probably is planning to go B5 here. Like allowing A B A B rook F B1 would be quite painful. We will see if I'm if I'm right about that. Because B5 also doesn't really look that that great. C takes, knight takes, rook fc1. It's um, Yeah, some jump ability though, no? 94. Uh, yeah, 94 is actually a lot more annoying than I thought because knight b3 is also a problem. Yeah. Good point. I did expect B5. I was just just wasn't sure if it was all that great. Maybe we go. Maybe we actually go Rook F B1, not not Rook F C1. Try to force you to uh, commit to a jump of some sort as early as possible, and then try to chase the knight away from that square. Also, what is he thinking about? Maybe E4 E5 is what he's thinking about. Because I'm I can't just really take. Figure out. Yeah. Already math. Yeah, there's maybe some argument for e3 here, but weakening the d3 pawn doesn't look doesn't look that attractive. Knight d5. Hmm. I have a strange question, and pardon my ignorance. Do you have accents inside Russia? Like, yeah, do you speak different yeah. Russian in Saint Petersburg than in, I think, Omsk, where Artemiev is from, or is it all similar? It's uh, you know, some of them are more noticeable and some are less noticeable but there's definitely regional regional accents and uh one kind of uh, uh typical accent that people ascribe to uh, sort of uh, more you know central russia is uh, uh, making much more emphasis on pronouncing the o's whereas in like moscow st petersburg many of the o's will be as in in long words but uh I mean, it's it would be to my ear, it would be sort of less noticeable compared to I don't know London versus Yorkshire. Uh, but that's probably because I'm just so much more used to 
uh, to people speaking Russian. Also, you you don't actually get much ac- like, like exposure to those uh, because they are very uh, region specific. So, of the chess players we know, who has the most alien to your ears sounding accent or most different from you, London, from you, Moscow, St. Petersburg, big city people? That's actually an interesting question. I've The name that came to my mind was Sergei Rublevsky, but I've I've not spoken to him in a while, and I it would be a uh, I would be basing it off of old memories, but that's the name that I came up with. Where's he from? Uh, he's originally from Kurgan. Oh. Um, he's, I think he's lived uh, between Kurgan and Kazan for a while, but I think he's back in Kurgan now. I just knowingly not. Yeah, this this now will be a draw, I assume. Magnus still has to suffer a little bit because that night, yeah. and, no, but not yeah. Now, now that it goes back to d6, you don't you don't really suffer anymore. It's just a draw. Yeah. So, 3-3 three, three in the making here. Artemiev hanging around. Yeah, absolutely. Or maybe it's rather Magnus hanging around. Artemiev has not looked worse at all in this match so far. So, so far, yeah, it's it's not not easy <clears throat> not easy to determine who was uh, who was doing the hanging around. Uh, it's it's curious that they're sort of continuing here. Yeah, I think Artemiev does the right thing. He I was expecting it on the previous move even, but Yeah, just get the rooks off the board and then you can quite safely offer a draw and not not really. Uh, Azur Mist is wondering if it will be hard for people to transition back to offline chess, touching real pieces, pressing clocks. I'll find out in a couple of days. Yeah, I, I'm worried. I, I'm, I'm really worried about playing, uh, playing classical over the board. Um, but... Yeah. That's very out of character for you. Like usually, you're <laughs> joyful, yeah. optimistic. No, you're worried. Absol- absolutely, yeah. I'm very well known for it. But yeah, jokes aside, it's been it's been such a long time uh, between uh, uh, between events that uh, it's a it's a genuine uh, it's a genuine consideration. But I I assume it will it will kind of go away by by round three. You get reacquainted with the idea. Beautiful. Chat is wondering if playing this out is plus EV for Artemiev. I guess you could argue if we consider him the outsider, it's good to have fewer games, but it's a very close and probably artificial debate. I, I would guess and it's more more in his interest than not to keep the games long at this point, no? but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I I never know. It's uh, it's uh, so difficult to figure out what the strat is supposed to be when the scores are level. Like if somebody is way behind, then you you have like a clearer picture of that. Of, I mean, you definitely want more games rather than long games, and your opponent wants to prolong every equal end game. But when the score is three three, it's just uh, completely. Well, this line I've seen before, a tree you can take or go bishop c8, but Magnus plays without a tree. Bishop d2, rook fc1, knight a4. Somewhat unpleasant for black. Our lost. friend on f1 will join us later. Yeah. I was genuinely curious. Instead of b6, do they ever just go bishop c8 instantly? Just commit to not playing b6, or is it too passive after knight e5? I'm sure I've seen that as well. Knight e5, e6. Knight yeah, just knight e5, e6. No, the grind. Pre- yeah. Pretend it's a... In general, bishop g4, not the most popular move at this point, but it does yeah, they've exist. Been, they've been playing other things recently, right? They've been yep. trying to figure out what those other things are, but yeah, well, you just... DC, bishop g4 has always been a line. There's also all kinds of e6, a6, mm-hmm. e6 that are played in that position. That's a that's a curious choice by, uh, by Artemiev here. Pawn! Yeah, figuring out that it doesn't actually hang is quite clever. Does it though? When you five knight c three, we understand, but knight yeah, but knight five bishop b six, I guess. Yeah, bishop c four, and then probably knight d six. I would assume, although I'm not a hundred percent. Construction is a bit. 
Yeah, it's uh, shaky. Um, seems a bit too risky to accept this pawn sacrifice in particular because you absolutely don't have to. Uh, you can play some kind of a normal move. Rook c1 comes to mind. h3 uh, is also very playable. Looks like Artemis is not into exchanging here, so probably Bishop goes back. Yeah, yeah I think the way he's put his pieces, yeah, you, you can't really. I mean, maybe you can. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe think so you, about knight a5. Mm, yeah, knight a5 is knight a5 is interesting as an inclusion. Uh, bishop f3 looks wrong because your center just collapses after bishop takes f3. But if you start with knight a5, maybe you can do it. But yeah, I expect he he plans to go bishop e6 here, or at least was planning to go bishop e6 here, and now he is trying to figure out if. If that's fine or not. You could also go knight take c3 and then maybe bishop f5 or something like that. Cicadian wants to know what does a day in a chess grandmaster's life look like? How long do they practice chess every day? What other activities? Peter, all yours. Yeah. Uh, uh, Perkless life is very, very difficult, but it is what I'm committed to right now. So before, like with the, with the super final so close, I kind of put a bit of a halt on trying to uh, continue with the Grunfeld course. I will return to it uh, after the tournament. I've, uh, I'm on a bit of a sabbatical from that uh, as if I needed an excuse. So reading, playing some video games, just chilling, doing some family stuff. There you go. That's how all grandmasters approach every day. Reading some video games, procrastinating on chess work. Me, I do spend a lot of time on anti-dolphin forums, as chat indicates, but other than that, it's the same. Do you watch trash TV? So I think it very much depends on the definition of trash TV, right? It's... Uh... Mm. Reality TV or no, no half scripted? I've, I've not watched, I think, anything in that genre in in forever. Is Queen takes D5 not? We are different, now? you and I. Hang on a second. Isn't this just a Queen D5, knight C3? Queen D8? There's no bishop on it anymore. No check. Did he and, the miss queen, this? and the queen doesn't actually get caught on D8. I was worried there for a second, but it escapes via the D5 square. And he yeah, does take, yeah. Take, yeah. Five, queen D5. Yeah. Well, that, that appears to have been a bit of a miss, yeah. Crunchy Treats is saying, what's the difference to looking so fresh as a grandmaster? It's my very young age, I'm only 28, and also avoiding physical labor or educating your own children as long as you can get your wife to do all the heavy lifting, staying up at night there. You can look fresh as a cucumber while you're doing the hard labor of chess commentary, or sitting next to Peter virtually while he's doing chess commentary. <laughs> yeah, blah, blah. Uh, 96. 96 is clever, though, because otherwise I think Black would have been... Uh, Black would have been... It would be difficult to continue even, but uh, this is a smart move. Um, Bishop 6 is a very annoying uh, threat here, so you might have to allow that knight to be traded for the light square bishop. We take, we go bishop e6 or pawn e6? I thought we go bishop e6, but that actually allows for some forking later on. Yeah, so it might not be playable. Yeah, maybe you just... I told it. you about the cursing. And I said, and I said I'm not toning it down, right? That's so true. We, we, we are both sticking to our guns here. And Magnus goes bishop e2 saying... Magnus does oh, want to fork up. Yeah. So he feels the queen will be completely safe somewhere on those squares after bishop e6, queen g5, and then I guess queen f4. Um, it might end up being on h2, but it's probably it's probably okay for a while. Like I think there might be a way for Black to force that queen all the way to h2. Uh, Artemiev instead cuts out the b3 square, and now e7, e6 is an actual winning threat. But yeah, Magnus will have something to say about that. Something like knight d2 or knight e5. I don't know. Knight d2 seems... Like hey, five forward. Yeah, forward. Why not? Why not move uh, move his pieces towards good squares? 
Yeah, and uh, more importantly, vacating uh, vacating the f3 square so that you have somewhere to retreat with the queen. Yeah, this looks wow. Rook c3 tactics bishop e4. Wow, whoa, 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 whoa. did not see that coming. Yeah, and probably Magnus hadn't either. Oops. Bishop yeah, c3 play quickly. Bishop e4. What's going I guess on? Knight f7, knight f7 or? Five, but yeah, but oh, yeah knight f7 seven. to buy himself that square. Yeah, or e6, this... or, yeah, e6 or g5. But that's now, this is very much a game. And uh, yeah, Tariff is very, very resourceful. And you you, you can't really relax for uh, for a second against him. I'm trying to figure out if I want that endgame or if I want to keep the queens on here as black and Artemiev goes queen c7, which the machine apparently thinks, ah, oh, okay, he blundered knight h6 check, I guess, and now he doesn't he doesn't get to win that knight. That seems to have King h8, there is no smothered mate. That's important. But, yeah, but queen g5 covers the yeah. horsey and white sort of wins. Oops. Yeah, that was that was too unnecessary. Clever. Yeah, he was he, he he tried being a bit too clever there, and uh that ended up backfiring. Yeah, this is just completely lost now because there's no way really to attack that knight on h6. Take the horsey. Yeah, take the horsey in some way. Uh, yeah, and now you just resign, basically. Yeah, queen b7, we can... Even d4, d5 is really not a mistake to trade the dark square bishops here, but also f3 is fine. Pretty much any move is fine. Yeah, please don't, don't punish me for that statement. <clears throat> no, no, no. This... We're done with that game. We all understand what you meant. Uh, can you? I've, I've actually Googled that once, but I don't remember the answer. Can you explain to me how the Pitino game came about? The Pitino game, that is a legendary basketball coach that was coaching, I believe, the Boston Celtics at that point. And he was not happy with his team. And he had a bit of a rant where he was saying, Larry Bird is not walking through that door, then mentioned other famous basketball players has become a bit of a meme ever since where you are saying so-and-so is not let walking through that door, often to describe a somewhat desperate situation. Yeah, that uh, I think that sort of applies to our team of position right now. I made all of that up because I'm a sociopath. Um, <laughs> sure might be two played. Yeah, queen e5, rook f6, uh, rook f6, knight g4 is not bad. Also, just uh, rook somewhere wouldn't have been uh, wrong either. But yeah, it's uh, it's really a matter of taste by this point. Magnus is not letting go of uh, of this one. Yeah. Tasty. Queen b8 check, and yeah, you you just resign somewhere here. That's game. Resign. Has he taken the lead? I think that yeah, that's the the first time in the match that he's taken the lead, right? I yeah, think. he lost the first one, so that's pretty safe bet. Yeah, Bishop g5. Uh, I wonder if Magnus actually goes c5 here, because I, I chickened out in my game against, I think, Sergei Kayakin. I chickened out. I didn't play c5 there. Wow. Uh, not because of e3, but because of e4, of course. Uh, I was very worried about entering that weird line with... Uh, uh, and actually now, you know, seeing our team of blitz out E3 here, I feel particularly silly because, you know, if, if you think for five seconds, uh, Karakin probably was also going to play E3 in a hard bit. And uh, me being extremely worried about those gambit variations was um, completely unfounded. Hmm. C4. Childish Gambito fierce. C4, he wants to go A5 without allowing B5. Yeah, do you do you actually spend a tempo on a6 a5 here or do you ignore it? I really don't know. I ignore it. And then a5 you take or because a5 does look like a reasonably serious positional threat. Yeah, I guess through this door yet. three it goes d5. Yeah. Door three does look very logical actually. Yeah. Um, Hard stopping all of that play by challenging the white center immediately. Do you have that game show with door one, two, three on Russian television? 
they've syndicated most other things, so I wouldn't be surprised. But uh, I don't like you. You you really, really, I think by this point have to pay me money to for me to watch Russian television. So, um, not happening. Yeah, I've, I'm not like seriously asking you for money for this for this particular activity. I'm just stating my preference. Uh, I do occasionally switch the TV on because we do we, we do get Eurosport. And there is a lot of snooker, more or less nonstop these days. So the TV set does occasionally get switched on, but never to watch actual Russian TV. <laughs> no, you'd also have to pay me money to watch Trash TV, Bachelorette, Prince Charming, Temptation Island, VIP, Love is Blind, X on the Beach, Love Island. I'd be, I'd be loaded if someone who <laughs> did pay me money. To watch <laughs> yeah, Magnus has done something slightly curious there. Why are you? Yeah, why have you reestablished that that pin on the D eight H uh, four? Can we take the pawn? That's what I want. Yeah, maybe we can actually. Yeah, it does feel risky ish, but maybe it's playable. You can also just play something like Queen C seven here, but then I don't know. She takes D five, Rook C one. It appears as if you're giving up a lot of tempi here. No, Chad, I'm not going to watch Too Hard to Handle, even if they pay me money. Okay, I will. And yeah, I know, no one said that. <laughs> Come on, Magnus, grab some pawns. Magnus Carlsen, big fan of X on the Beach, the Norwegian version. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. Well, I say, Maria Ja, ist ein bisschen gruselig, ne? Entschuldige. Sorry, Intruder here. Uh, Magnus, has Magnus actually tanked here for like a minute and a half? Because it seems like this has been a very, very long tank. He's calculating Bishop C3. It could be an understandable tank, no? Yeah, yeah sure. But still, um, he played Bishop before very, very quickly. And 95 is by far the most the most natural reply to that. And yeah, and then he, he did take a... Whoa, and uh, knight c4 played very quickly again, ostensibly leaving the rook only one on priest, but you're probably not allowing knight c4. Probably check, spotted yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's a pity we didn't get to see Nelly, but. Yeah, she was wearing like... one of my jackets. Didn't fit her, I told her in strong words. In no uncertain terms. Yeah. GM Benjamin Feingold is joining us. Welcome. He's saying he's hoping for a more cultured stream here. Don't you worry. So where were we? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know why it, you know it makes me so inordinately happy to listen to the sounds of Jan's home life, but it does. It does not make me too happy, so I'll try to <laughs> block them all out. Apologies. Sure. Uh, I unfortunately I don't think I can move things on Jan's screen, so this will be, uh, you know, a, a bit of a blindfold commentary stream here. I assume A B A B Rook A eight is your first port of call. You could also definitely consider taking on D seven here and then going Queen D five, but that allow sorry and then ninety five, but that allows Queen D five uh, attacking the pawn on G two, uh, and then you probably do end up losing that exchange on E one. That's probably not great, I would guess. No. Is this the line you're talking about? I just yeah. caught the last. Yeah, I think Artemis may have Where's underestimated he's... B5 here. I, I'm not sure what he's supposed to do in reply. Come on, Knight F7, Artemis, YOLO. Yeah, let's yeet that knight towards the, into the F7 pawn. What do you? You don't yeet things towards things. You yeet things into things, right? I have never heard that word, and I'm not planning to learn it. <laughs> Said he clearly typing it into a Google search. No. <laughs> we all heard you. Stop pretending. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you're supposed to play here with white. Um, and neither neither is neither is Artemis clearly. Knight of seven does look interesting, but I don't think it quite works out. Uh, without 
the option of knight d6 check, black will just take only one next move, so you can't really play something like knight e3. Yeah. So what do you say, Artemia was worse or not yet? <laughs> well played, sir. Might be worse, yeah, I can't find a move. Hmm. I just, just can't figure out what to play at all. Time is running as well. Still ahead on the clock, but he might catch up. I would say in like 20 seconds. Nope. He goes AB. Yeah. AB, AB, Rook A8. I think Bishop A8 even is playable. I don't know if Queen A8 is a mistake, but I think even Bishop takes is a enough of an issue for, for White because the, the underlying problems remain. Move the knight, Artemiev. What is he thinking about? Is he thinking about knight f7 or knight d7? He's probably thinking about it. Yeah, he's maybe, maybe seven, yeah, five, but trying to include also. some kind of knight d7 somewhere. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't really, I can't really work out how. How does this work? Well, I mean, queen takes or just yeah, queen takes with take on a8 and on knight b6. Yes, yeah, we, we get knight b6. So he he did find a he did find a way to combine the things he needed to combine there. Oh, he hasn't played. No, no he hasn't done it yet. I was just wondering. Or maybe BC is playable, but then he gets some compensation for sure. And uh, there's also some rook takes e6 madness, which might no, probably not. Yeah, I don't know. 97 does look right, though. though. Of the things we've discussed, it, it clearly is the one option which uh, is at least somewhat sensible. Rook a8. Maybe with the same intention, but one move later. Yeah, if bishop takes, we go knight takes d7. Yeah. Just, you know, target the pawn. Queen a8, we go. Yeah, but everything is hanging. How you? How do you react to that? Hanging, hanging, hanging. Yeah, I think you. Ah, it just goes back. Uh, and b five is hanging. Here he wants some f three. You take this. So. Mm -hmm. so he found a way to sort of consolidate by uh, by uh, distracting the queen away from the d five. With the queen on d eight, knight takes c five here would be uh, a huge problem because things along the d file would be very much hanging. Black is fine, but uh, maybe White does manage to uh, keep his keep his things together. We also below one minute. The action is about to take off. That doesn't make sense. Not a native speaker. Short castles played by Magnus. He doesn't want any drama. Bishop takes b five. Artemiev. Is now a pawn up, but I don't think he can even dream about being better. Like yeah, I think I think so black active. always black. Yeah, also queen a five. Hang on a second. You you actually oh, missed that. Yeah, bishop f one, queen a five, rook e two. But that's just oof. That's just so ugly. Uh, but you might have to. No, rook e five exists in this position. That's maybe uh, an improvement, and this is probably why uh, Magnus doesn't even bother going queen a five, ninety five first. Yeah. Usually you just lose this in. Yeah, I think uh, a very um, fast-paced game. No, here he comes, Bishop C4. Even Nine in classical, four. I would I would probably pick black. Like it, it goes draw, then black, and then a very very low percentage for white wins. What is this, Bishop D2, Rook? What? What? Bishop F6 or what? No, Bishop F6, Knight G6, Rook E6 Nine or something. G6. But that's that's never going to work, right? That that never ends up working. <clears throat> Bishop C8 there. Pin them, pin them all. Yeah, no, that, that's just, yeah. Also, you can include queen a1 check at any point. Queen a1 check, bishop f1, fe, and white resigns, basically. Pin. Right, that's, yeah, also not bad, yeah. Mm, Hard to criticize. He does resign too. Yeah, things are going slightly off the rails for Timmy. If, so I did yes. mention Magnus's strategy is usually to have the score two and a half, two and a half, and then win 10 in a row. I said he's not going to do it this time, but... He's one on. two, yeah. He's one two. And there's probably is was that was, was that yeah that's the is last that, one. Is that the end? Yeah, yeah. Seems like that that's the end. <clears throat> um, that's only seven games, or have we? No, that's probably eight. Think right? five plus three, it's eight. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's going to be a bit of a a bit of a break now, ten to maybe fifteen ish minutes. What do we Which, do with the break? I have a new, what's the English word? 
rice cooker is that a thing that is definitely a thing yeah i think i might i might switch it on during the break because then once the rice is done just stays warm you can leave it in there forever mm. i was about to ask where you just going to switch it on or where you going to put any rice in it but you yeah yeah, yeah i'll put rice in there and water i think you need water thank you so much for watching now use the break to visit the fantastic site chess24.com or the equally fantastic site chessable.com then do come back in 10-15 minutes when we will be here with the three plus one portion the world champion seems to have found his footing and is now up two points against Vladislav Artemia but there's a lot of chess to be played in this match and the match after this one so see you guys later bye hi everyone welcome to the peak inside of the queen's gambit accepted i'm international master sopika goromishvili and i'm happy to be here with you on chessable even though i've recorded a lot of various chess opening video series this is my first one on chessable and it is a lifetime reporter queen's gambit accepted why queen's gambit accepted back in 2017 when I had to prepare for the Women's World Knockout Chess Championship, I wanted to have something compact yet complete. This is how Queen's Gambit Accepted became the core part of my opening repertoire, and since then I'm using it successfully in my own games. The Queen's Gambit Accepted, QGA as we call in chess world, is an exciting chess opening. It is a combination of strategy and dynamism. And the goal of this course is to provide you with an exciting, sharp and reliable, complete repertoire against first d4 and first knight f3. Now let's sneak into the website and see how it works. Here you can see a lot of information about me, about the course, and this is a preview of the course. Now let's get into the chapters and see how it is ordered. I've ordered the Queen's Gambit Accepted in the following way. First, I'm introducing you to the opening and then we have Quick Starter Guide. A Quick Starter Guide is an overview of the whole repertoire. So we cover the most important lines and give you a bit of feeling of what should you expect from the course d4, d5, c4, d takes d4, e4, b5, a4, c6, a takes b5, c takes b5, knight c3, a6, knight takes b5, a takes b5, rook takes a8, bishop b7, rook a1 once again, e6, and knight e2. Now, this is the most ambitious line um, of e4, variation because it intends to play knight c3 and protect the e4 pawn and put pressure on b5 pawn. We cannot allow this. Now it's time to take the pawn. Bishop takes e4 and of course here white's main line is knight c3 but let's take a look at move b3. b3 is way too ambitious as we have a very powerful reply knight c6 heading to b4 square b takes c4 and now knight b4 we're already threatened to give check on c2 and regain the exchange back white cannot do anything about it so black is doing very fine in this line as well now let's see more solid option from white here you can see that we are covering all, all the lines rook a1 rook a2 which is also very important we have knight f3 and fourth move sidelines and you can see we're covering a lot of options here d4 d5 c4 d takes c4 knight f3 knight f6 this is the start of our journey to knight f3 variation and here, let's say queen a4, this is intending to take c4 pawn as fast as possible. 
then we go very interesting knight c6 after knight c3 we play knight d5 force white to take care either to take on c4 or to do something about knight b6 e4 knight b6 queen d1 bishop g4 bishop e3 to strengthen the d4 pawn and after e6 bishop e2 and queen d7 you can see the annotations as well black successfully preserved the pawn and will put more pressure on d4 pawn after playing long castle here we go and push the button learn moves and first we are shown how is the line and then we have a little quiz what shall we play after bishop e2 for example here i told you not to be greedy and take the e4 pawn but instead we should take care of development so we go knight f6 which is correct move and after knight f3 we are going to have a check bishop b4 bishop d2 and here again we are going to take uh, the bishop and then take on e4 this is a great tool to remember the lines to understand the position and to master the opening i really hope that you enjoy the preview and overview of the course and i wish you good luck in your games see you in the next video enthusiastic hello to all the chess lovers and the chessable fans I have also become one of them after making this course. Uh, I hope you guys are doing great in these tough pandemic times and more strength to you guys. Let me introduce myself. This is Grandmaster S.P. Sethraman from India, the Indian man with three names like Maxim Vashel Lagare, who also has three names. Uh, I have a FIDE rating of 2644 and some of my notable achievements are that I have won the Asian Championship in the year 2016 and have been part of the bronze winning Indian team. Uh, in the Olympia 2014. So apart from that, I have uh, represented Team India in various official events like Asian teams, World teams, and the Olympiad. I will be presenting you guys one e4 e5 with the black side. And in Chessable, I found this Moon Trainer technology very impressive, which I will show you guys while uh, checking the chapters. I have spent two months of time to prepare this course, backed up with uh, thorough analysis by the engines. And uh, I have used uh, Leela Chess 0 and Stockfish 12 as an analytical tool. And I can assure you guys that it will be of great quality with top-notch novelties and remarkable insights with loads of explanation. So let's uh, browse into the chapter. So these are the 29 opening chapters in the course along with the exercises and the model games. So like I said, uh, I have often trodden to the offbeat paths. So we will see one chapter in Ponziani, where even in some uh, quiet sidelines, I have found some swashbuckling ideas presenting my own theory. Like, uh, let's say this variation with uh, Bishop E2. Uh, a peculiar move aiming for slow play. But uh, here, like I said, I found a swashbuckling idea with G5. And I was intrigued by this move as there are only five games uh, in the database and uh, it contains a lot of fascinating ideas and uh, such direction really motivated me uh, to probe further and you can see quite often in many of the systems ideas like uh, G5. So like let's say even in the four nights variation I have come up with the out of box approach. Like let's go to the four knights knight d4 variation and here uh, as as you know like all the guys have been aware of this move bishop b4 which is the classical main line which uh, leads to tons of theoretical discussions but i don't know how many of you guys know this move interesting move knight e4 a bohemian approach which simply sidesteps the ton tons of theoretical debate and uh, I was really proud of this uh, invention upon the research of this course as I was myself not aware of this move and when I uh, probed into it into depth I found many instructive and interesting variations for both sides and I really hope after this course this move will catch some fire as 
it simply kills a lot of theory and it leads to highly tactical and dynamic play for instance knight c6 then knight c3 the race begins and uh, i will leave the suspense uh, here as you will see in the main course how it goes and uh, there are two versions video and videoless version the video version will be um, packed with full of stories and uh, historical facts too like i have included many um, uh, facts of the opening systems which even i was not aware of the history behind each opening always fascinated me and you can find as well so go for it guys and you will never regret it of uh, buying my course and i hope it will really be useful for you guys and benefit it in every way to uh, approach e5 1 e4 e5 in a different light in a more aggressive light and um, yes thank you guys for patiently listening and good luck with the course my best wishes uh, signing off from you uh, grandmaster sp sethuraman thank you welcome back everybody it was about time we interrupted that chessable.com slash Jan I hear is fantastic and um, we are covering the match between the world champion Magnus Carlsen and one of the best players players in the world Vladislav Artemyev and the three plus one portion has just kicked off so now the players have three minutes plus one second per move Magnus Carlsen with a two-point lead Peter Svidler is here with us the eight-time Russian champion to take us through all the action. Peter, what's this? Uh, Artemyev continues sort of jumping around the, the various Slavs. He's played the, the more or less main line Slav once. He's played the Schlechter, I think, in the previous uh, game with the black pieces and uh, chose bishop g4, and he goes e6 here, which I assume is uh, basically him saying, don't really care about equalizing, just want to have pieces on the board and play would be really shocking if you could play like this and still aim for full equality out of the opening uh, although i will defer to your judgment no judgment this is a safe place rook to eight yeah, I'm not entirely sure if we're supposed to just play quietly, like b3, bishop b2 or something, or if we, maybe it's time already to push e3, e4 and uh, just uh, go for something concrete in the center. Specifically against rook e8, I assume uh, e4 is maybe not that great because it does look like black is trying to prepare for that specifically. Mm -hmm. Still don't see how it's ref uh, refuted, but uh, probably b3 is more in keeping with what Magnus normally does. She takes d5 surprises me a little bit though, but he does it in such a way that black is forced to take with the e pawn, I guess. And then he has a, a, a structural advantage because there's a slightly weakened pawn on c6. Doesn't look too horrible to me though. We should be seven, rook c8, c5. Doesn't really look like black will be uh, suffering too much. But honestly, I think this suits both of them, or at least they both think it suits them. Let's, I think that's that's a slightly fair way to describe it. Uh, probably suits one of them more than the other, but um, this type of uh, slow maneuvering game, I think, is uh, is perfectly fine for uh, for both in terms of what they prefer to do over the chessboard. I've always liked these structures for white because it feels like you make some random moves and then the black structural problems with the d5 pawns. They don't go away. Black is usually not in time to get in C4 or something active. Not saying why is it better necessarily, but it felt always felt easier to play somehow. Yeah, I tried. I tried playing positions like this with black. I would get when I was a, a, a much younger, younger man than I am now. Uh, now I would get uh, the the hanging pawn structures from the Queen's Gambit declined, and I would think. I would think I was okay for a while, and then my opponent would just say, hey, loser, and start picking my pawns apart. And uh, it wasn't a very pleasant experience. Contributed Do you think that this childhood bullying made you the man you are today? 
Knight F2. In a way, I don't think you were supposed to allow Knight takes F2, though. That was probably a bit of a misplay. Magnus! Stop the blunders! Now you can even go Knight takes C5 and <laughs> have the King of Two Bishop takes C3 works. Wow. This looks completely lost for white, honestly. And geometry. He, he spots it. That's very beautiful. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of a shocker because Magnus is yeah you 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 don't normally miss. Also, that. not exactly an unknown motive. This knight takes f two with the queen on e seven. So yeah, he's not he's not hundred percent focused, but he's still up two points. Yeah, still still up two and still reasonably uh, reasonably in control of of proceedings here. And actually, he does manage to to sort of. Uh, uh, get away with it a little bit because the bishop on b7 is somewhat passive. If you if you add the pawn back to f2 here for white, white is I think significantly better actually. So it's a kind of a stupid way of assessing sacrifices that I've <laughs> feels a bit stupid to say I've invented it, but I've definitely invented it for myself. I'm sure it existed somewhere, but I've uh, it was something I came up for for myself trying to evaluate just let's say how winning. Uh, your position is when you're up material or, you know, how much compensation you have when you're down material. What was it? I, I missed the first part. What's your invention? Well, let's say, you're, let, let's invention. say, let's say you're down a pawn uh, uh -huh. and, and then you, you, like as a mental experiment, you add that pawn back. And if that only makes the position equal, then you're probably in a lot of trouble. But if, if you add the pawn back and you're suddenly much better, then you probably have decent compensation. And here, like if you imagine the same position with the pawn of two not being blundered, white I think is quite happy. Although I'm less sure now that the knight got the, got a very nice square on c4. Huh. But still, this, there's definitely some compensation because the bishop on b7 is really, really poor. Do we have to add the pawn to the square where we blundered it on or to not, a square not, where not, like it? And, you know, the, the more I've invited you into my secret lab here, the more I kind of think I really should not have done that. because No, the, there will be questions. Yeah, the amount of teasing I will get for this is now well, no. off the charts. But. Uh, that might be useful Super Grandmaster advice, so we should not mock it. We should try to learn. Yeah, or, possibly, or possibly both. Hmm. Or just mock. Oh yeah, yeah, like all three, all three are very much valid approaches here. Yeah, you, I'm, I'm not discriminating. Um, yeah, it's it's going to take some some uh, work. If the pawn was added here, um, then rook c1 would be checkmate. Yeah, ex exactly. So yeah, it's uh, it's clearly a very whoa. And Artemio just trades everything. Isn't this a draw? Think... What, what are you doing, Artemio? I don't think I, I don't winning? think you win this bishop end game sort of ever. Weird. So yeah, that's a very very strange approach. I think I think this is basically. Although, yeah, you wait until black plays a five, and then you take on g five. You, I was about to oh, say you, you just... never you never take here, but uh, oh, that's also probably very safe. Now you put the bishop on f three, and black actually never gets to play h five. Yeah, uh, and then the, it's 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 sort of of academic interest that black is even a pawn up here. Very very weird conversion technique here. Really don't understand this. He is tough to beat, Mr. Magnus, especially once he's mad at himself and decides to focus extra hard because he did something wrong. King yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Eight. but uh, it, it, it did seem like Artemiev didn't even come, come close in this game, which will be disappointing to him. That was a kind of a big chance to to start the new uh, the new section with a win, as mm -hmm. he had. In the five plus one, yeah, I don't think there is much to be done here for black anymore. Of course, you're perfectly entitled to continue. Sh oh, okay, h five was allowed, but I guess even that doesn't really matter because you 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 never actually get to cross with the king. Yeah, I think it is one of those times, Jake, uh, Jake, uh, or nine nine eight. It's uh. It's one of those positions where the evaluation probably is something like minus two, uh, and it stays minus two regardless of how long you you let it run, and it never really makes any progress. Just continues shuffling. Isn't it zero 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 here? If you have a fresh modern engine, it will give you a zero zero. Possibly, yeah, possibly. And um, 
but but regardless of what the evaluation is, you, you do at some point have to. I mean, at some point you notice that the first line is basically uh, white and black, just in uh, shuffling, shuffling, shuffling without ever making any progress, and that's not very uh, hopeful for black here. We have too many Jakes in the chat now. We have to get rid of one. Um, we, are we having a Jake off? Wow. CP Coutert, please intervene. <laughs> well played, though. I don't think there's any. I think it's pronounced Yakov, but I don't think there are any in the chat. Just two Jakes. Yeah, Bishop takes you for. Is he trying to lose? Who? Oh. He, he's probably not going to succeed, but uh, yeah. yeah. Magnus just says, okay, next game, we've, we've had enough of this. And next game, 1b3 played by Artemiev, c5 played by Carlson. e3, d6, hinting at e5. What do you do here? c4. He's probably just going to play c4. Yeah, I think he normally just. Uh, just e4, Magnus away. takes and plays d5. Yeah, he doesn't care. Normal ish stuff. I was wondering about e5 straight away, but um, I guess starting with d6 is never really a mistake. You definitely. Like you're being invited quite strongly to play e5 here because d4 e4 is actually quite attractive, but Magnus refuses. I wonder if you take on f6 here uh, just to make the position less balanced. Would have been interesting. I don't think it was unplayable at all. Um, I, I, I guess you take with the g pawn, then white plays c4, knight c3, g3, bishop g2, and. Um, I, I think that was that was a very valid approach there, but our team is not committing for now. Also, a bit strange to to see Magnus just uh, pause for so long on move five because he is he asleep? Yeah. He, he did choose play. to. He did choose to uh, go for this set. Also, he's played this little pawn formation under way worse circumstances. So now that he can get it <clears throat> in a good version, yeah, still absolutely. This is, uh, this is a very, very decent c5e5 uh, English, even though they normally develop the g8 knight to e7, but I think it's not a huge deal. d5? He's not waiting around, as you mentioned. He usually wants the horsey here. <laughs> What are your weirdos talking about? Uh, you just ignore us. Um, it's hard. Yeah, this is completely fine for black. Uh, probably black is not war, not better, but black definitely has potential for uh, becoming better, better later in the game. Seems like a very, very comfortable mar, I'd say. The bishop probably belongs on e6, right, rather than b7. So you put the bishop on e6, you go like rook, rook c8, queen e7, rook fd8, and then you start looking for ways to make progress. I pick black in a heartbeat. I'm not sure if it's a matter of taste. I also think black is better here. Yeah, but it's, it's, unless you actually are prepared to go for some kind of an assault on the king side, it's just very, very difficult to find a proactive plan, I think. Uh, for black, but given enough time to prepare, you can definitely imagine black going for some kind of f5, g5, f4 plans, in particular if white over commits to moving everything to the queen side. But apart from that, it's just so, so hard to you know, to figure out where you're going. Which wow, he goes to a6. Yeah, it's a bit unclear why why we're doing this. I guess knight c4, b5, yeah, just 
B5 and there's no good square for that knight. He's being mm -hmm. very concrete. Uh, after queen c2, what are we doing after queen c2? I guess we just continue like queen d7. Rook c8, or hinted some horsey. Mm, yeah, yeah, rook c8. Queen b1 would be a logical reaction. Of course, allowing knight d4 would be a bit disastrous. Obviously. Rook e8 creates a threat of e4, but white would be not very hard pressed to deal with it. I go b4 so, now. What's it doing? Queen c7 yeah, was I, I don't, I don't go to e7 or somewhere that stops it. Yeah, I don't really see, I don't really understand Queen C7. Focus, Mr. Magnus. Yeah. That that definitely is an improvement for White getting to trade the C5 pawn for the B3 pawn. Black is probably still fine, but you normally have to work quite hard for White to uh to achieve this. Yeah, this is the dream strategically. Yeah, it's actually kind of awkward. In particular, now that we've placed our bishop on a6 and uh, not really gotten anything out of it, it's it's not that easy to play this position. Queen d7, yeah, looks uh, looks awkward, but maybe it was required, and there are no jumps that work immediately, right? Knight d6, black can even just go rook c7 or something. Bishop, bishop d6, bishop, bishop d6, oh. yeah, very. Uh, What's going on? I have five others. Queen a2 check. Uh -huh. Yeah, queen a2 check. Yeah, and then there's tactics. Unfair. Young people and their calculating abilities. Bishop b7. Is queen b6 not winning? What is happening here? What is Magnus doing? Is Mr. Magnus drifting? I mean, he's just a pawn down now for, frankly, not very much. Yeah. Although... I mean, f5 is a threat. If we go bishop a3, rook b8 is a little bit annoying. So maybe it's not, uh, it's not immediately winning for for white. But it goes h6. Not going f5 yet. Possibly. Where about queen b3, knight g5? Stopping all of that. Goes. Hang on. Rook c6. Queen, queen a3. a3. Yeah, you have, you like you have queen a3, but yeah, it's just the the, the entire game is extremely meh by. Bishop yes. B7, yeah. Bishop B7. Take the squares. No. Yeah, I... He's really not been not been anywhere near his absolute A game. And it's uh, it's a bit of a sc scary proposition, yeah, that he is playing, frankly, by his standards, just you, you have to say poorly and, and, and still beating somebody who is an absolute beast in these formats. Yeah, that's how the last tournaments have been, with the exception. Of the West of the final, yeah, yeah, because yeah, this is the the progression from position by move fifteen to the position by move twenty five is just very very hard to to describe. The pawn was still on B six, we'd be winning now. <laughs> exactly, yeah, Bishop fade. He probably holds this as well because uh, the, the bishops probably do come off eventually. So it's, it's going to be very very difficult to keep that. Uh, it was rook b7 yeah, yeah, not catching the bishop? The what the hell? What? Rook b7? Mm. I mean, yes, rook c1 exists, but like knight d4? And he did he, he did it only the second time, uh, at the second time of asking. Like the, oh, it's still a draw now? Why is very yeah, yeah, white is, white is not even worse, but uh, such a weird game. Such a weird game. So many, so many seemingly completely unforced. Unforced mistakes. There's a question if it's rude to refer to Artemiev as little Vlad. Yeah, that sounds wrong. Yeah, he's not little. He's a... He's uh, a tall Vlad. Yeah, he's a... I mean, although probably the big Vlad is, is, is also the, the, the taller of the two, but yeah, he is not, he is not little at all. Rashmore now saying, Jan taking credit for Mr. Dodge ideas now. I have been mainly just the voiceover for Mr. Dodgy ideas for a solid decade at this what, point. Which Mr. Dodgy ideas are, are those? I'm not sure, but <clears throat> I will not deny it. What's Mr. Dodgy? Ah, is it because Mr. Dodgy said if the pawn was back on B6, then black would be a queen up? 
Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> but I did, I did do the same joke earlier with the pawn on f2. So clearly, Mr. Dodgy stole my idea, and then I restole it. Yeah. Oof, we need this settled. If only we had a fair, impartial mod, ideally from Holland, who <clears throat> would be willing to stand up to Mr. Dodgy's nonsense. Uh, yeah. Come on, Jake. Your time to shine is now. Oh, I meant CP Couter, but Jake, <laughs> I know. as long as you're on my side, you are allowed to rule in this too. I know. But that was too, too good to pass up. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. Yeah, Magnus is very insistent on trying to win this position, but also probably running down the clock is not... Uh... We have multiple Jakes who are willing to rule in this matter. Maybe we can have a citadel of Jakes. If, yeah, fe5, bishop e5, e4, it's and a draw. takes e5, yeah. This will be a draw. Not, not unexpectedly. <laughs> Jake Lawrence wants to know what the matter at hand is. So the thing is, Peter has this, let's call it a rule, or um, he has this thing where he imagines a pawn that he blundered is still on the board in order to evaluate the position. And now, there were multiple jokes about this. Earlier I made the joke when the pawn on f2 was missing, where I said if the pawn was on f2, then would be back rank mate. Then Mr. Dodgy made the joke that if a pawn was on b6 here, if the pawn was still there, black would be a queen up. Then I made, joke is strong, let's say I made the statement in a later position here that if the pawn was still on b6, we'd be winning. And now the question is who gets to take credit for this avalanche of humor? Oh, this is a game that's very dear to my heart because. Uh, if if Vlad actually has an idea how to equalize in this line, I would be greatly appreciative. Uh, this is f3, knight c6, which I tried making work on on a number of occasions with very, very limited success. Oh, I also know something about this. It's a scary line for black, this knight, three, knight, f2. Mm -hmm. Very scary. C6, yeah, one of never the really knight c5 either. followed by e5 is another one. And b5 here. Is that what the cool kids do now? I don't know. It feels like it's a pawn, right? You just take and you and you go back. And uh, I'm not entirely sure what we've gotten for the pawn here. And knight c5, I guess, but we can just go rook e1. For now, rook e1, bishop f1, and eventually white probably stabilizes. It doesn't look like it's an entirely sound sacrifice. Maybe rook e1, knight takes e4, though, was working. So he goes bishop e2, rook b4. Bishop f3, maybe even a3. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. I think it's maybe just a pawn, right? What's going on? Is Peter finally going to win a vote? All you needed to win a vote was not having Mr. Dodgy campaign for you? Yeah, that probably is the absolutely the settling factor there. Feels rigged to me. Damn, I even contributed some points and that wasn't enough anyway. I, I was trying to sabotage my own campaign by voting for other people, but apparently I'm so far ahead in that, uh, that that even trying to vote with points is not swaying the 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 electors. The rogue electors are not rogue enough. It's not the first time. No. Uh, you know what? I won't do that joke. I'll leave it to Mr. Dodgy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it seems like Magnus is just a pawn up, honestly. Bishop a6, rook b1. And uh, I mean, it, it looks vaguely vulgar ish, but um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't feel like there, there will be enough play. I like queen b4, though. a3, queen b3 gives black additional squares. And if you go bishop f3, bishop a6 wins, uh, wins a tempo. 
but I yeah, I still don't really. Hang on, feel. Compi is turning on white. Why? What have we missed? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe A3 was suboptimal. We can take on E4. To see like Queen C3, that's a bit much. Yeah, I was also wondering about that, but I, I can't really make myself believe that. Bishop E3, Knight takes E4, though. Maybe Magnus thought he can go Bishop E3 in this position, but that uh, allows for a cute little tactic. So it's not that easy for White to actually um, continue developing. E4, E5. Yeah, E5 is very critical. Maybe Bishop D7 was. But how do we protect? After Knight E8, he just goes Bishop E3 then. Yeah, that's that's what he wants to do. Yeah. Five. Yeah, but that that doesn't feel like it's uh, it's going to be enough. And the issue is, even if you do win the b two pawn back with the knight on the eight, like some position after let's say rook c one, queen b two, uh, and then bishop c five, d c, that knight on the eight is so misplaced that white ends up being better anyway. Um, a bit surprised by uh, queen takes b three because knight b three and then d gives black maybe some way to uh, fight against the white center. Mm -hmm. Mr. Magnus, slow, 27 seconds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now we go DE, Bishop A7, Rook B7. This is actually, you know, somewhat somewhat playable for Black. And Magnus doesn't even take on A7, goes Knight D3, attacking the Bishop on, on E5, attacking the Pawn on F5. Why this is probably still better, but... Uh, I have a feeling there were ways of dealing with the with the position which were even harsher. Um, but yeah, white white definitely still is uh, the one running the show. Hard to believe he's gonna let this one slip. There's still some jumping around the uh, left, like knight e4 probably, or knight, either knight e4 or knight c4 is uh, is definitely something you should be playing, yeah. Threatening the white structure. Knight c4 is much stronger than knight e4, you're absolutely right. It might be difficult to to actually preserve the uh, the structure. He goes rook c1, even giving up the pawn on uh, b2 altogether. I guess he wants some kind of d6, knight d5 or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, th you you really need to be sure this works. This is very exciting. Look at this. Uh, Magnus found a way to, to to sacrifice a full piece here for. Why exactly? Yeah, I mean the question. He just why blunder. Exactly, yeah. What's did going not, on? He did really seem, does look sloppy today. Yeah, I did not seem forced by by any means. Yeah, why is probably just losing now? Yeah, f six king f seven. You just won g six ninety seven. He really did not he need to do any well, of that. Now, I'm not a great mood reader, but I would guess he's currently not thrilled. Probably not, yeah. He's, he, he tried holding a position similar to that early in the match and didn't succeed. I, I assume he will uh, continue playing for a bit here as well, but yeah, not a very high likelihood of success either. Yeah, King of Fate and then take on... Oh, he allowed the pin. Yeah, allowing the pin maybe wasn't 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 the the cleanest way because yeah, now Magnus quite happily takes on a four. And in a blitz game, you're not a hundred percent guaranteed to actually win this. Um, with What's a, the percentage? I don't know. Like, I mean, I assume it's winning, but uh, it's. It still requires work. Ugh. I'm not even sure what the what the correct procedure here is because, like, the, the the machine clearly says it's completely winning, judging by where the bar is. But uh, 
Yeah, I guess with the knight on e6, maybe we can just go after the pawn, right? Because the knight on e6 just blocks the the white king uh, efficiently enough. Yeah, and and, and now you, you knight on g5 get, yeah. will be nice, and mm -hmm. he resigns. Just in case you were wondering, for example, here this construction can never be shaken. So Carlson loses a a tough one. Only up yeah. one. And and also, it did seem like he was uh, in control for most of it, and and only up one now. When he, at some point it looked like he might go up three, and that would be a very very large problem. Um, back to some sort of shenaniganry here with the with the h six line. Although you know you, you have to say that all of these queens yeah, can be declined with a six and legit blitz openings, and he's played them in tournament games. All these h six a six nonsenses. Mm. And Artemi was also not the type to punish it with some very direct play no he just wants the pieces out usually first yeah he just he just says okay i will play at sucker tort with arguably a tempo up and uh, be be happy about it <clears throat> knight takes d4 though that's uh I do like it sucker tort yeah who doesn't look at me i clearly do we're old peter no more sucker torts low I've, carb uh, yeah i've 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 lived that life and uh, I I can't force myself to do it anymore. Did you let yourself go during the pandemic? Did you did you no. gain weight? No, I've I've uh, I decided that uh, the way to go is to actually kind of uh, uh, increase the amount of uh, training I'm doing and also just stop watching what I eat. So that kind of evens <laughs> evens itself out, oh, and uh, okay. it's it's been sort of working for me. It's not a bad approach. It's probably worse than training and watching what you eat, but better than not training and not watching what you eat. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, for looks, not for life quality necessarily. Yeah, I think I think this way is this way is preferable. Queen b6. Yeah, Magnus is equal. Good. Yeah, if anybody. Actually, you take black, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. C3 was, is dumb. I was about to say, if anybody is better, it's black, but it's really, really minor. And I like a4 just solving the, the potential issues of, you know, being slightly worse in some endgame because your pawn only 3 gets uh, fixed. I'm not sure I like a5, though. That's a target, I think, more than it is a, a, an achievement for white. <clears throat> Looked like progress, but yeah. Key square still well covered. Yeah, actually, yeah, the knight on a4 is not stupid, and I can't really figure out any way to attack the pawn on a4. I mean, there is bishop d8, but it doesn't look like something that white needs to worry about. I mean, in all, if all else fails, we can just go knight b6 and trade the a5 pawn for the a6 pawn there, I guess. Mm. We should have three. Mm. I guess you take with the queen there. What's yeah, you take with the queen. Black goes knight g5, yeah, and then we go rook c1. And we don't have jumps, knight f5. What's going on? Like, should have six. Looks attractive, but I think bishop f6 is probably solid enough in reply, right? I don't see any refutation. Je ne sais pas. Hi, Dutch defender. Apologies in advance if there's not enough chess coverage. Um, knight d5 played. Yeah, I think Artemis is quite seriously considering some kinds of jumps because otherwise you just autopilot rook c1 here, but um, he hasn't yet. Clearly, he's very interested in something more, more ambitious. I'm not sure what that more ambitious move is, though. Knight f5, bishop f6 doesn't really even look like it's something you will calculate for much, uh, for very long. It just doesn't look right somehow. Uh, rook c1, we, you can go queen b7. You can also maybe just go bishop f6 just to make sure you never blunder anything on the long diagonal. Knight c6, queen b7 appears to be quite safe. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that this is an option you can definitely take. 
Also, Rook C6, Bishop B2, Knight E5. Hang on, Rook C6 winning? Oh, let's think this through. Oof, watch it yet. And resigns. The queen cannot cover the rook. Oops. Yeah, and Magnus, <coughs> Magnus, Magnus does Magnus spot that, yeah. Will spot, and he does. Yeah, queen e2, you do, you do win the a6 pawn for now, but I think uh, black is probably going to be able to to stabilize and then pick up the pawn on a5. Oh, even knight b8, I didn't see knight b8. Knight b8 is quite clever. Not even giving up the pawn on a6. It's a, it's an important pawn, so I think it's very reasonable. Magnus decides that he doesn't want to part with it. Uh, do Vladislav and Vladimir have different diminutives in, in Russian? Yeah, absolutely. Vladislav's, they will be Slava's more... I mean, in in, in Artemis' specific case, he is Vlad. No, I, I don't think anybody calls him... I mean, maybe his family calls him Slava, but he is Vlad. But generally, uh, names ending in Slav end up, uh, you know, many of them, if not all of them, end up being with the diminutives being, being Slava and Vladimir's are Vlad's. Hmm. Do you think Magnus to prepare? He heard this song about Artemiev. It's an old song by who is it? Hadaway, I think Hadaway. What song? Um, Vladi's love, baby, don't hurt me. Oh, that song. Hurt me no more. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe he he did use it as a battle hymn today, but uh, I'm not sure. You know whether he, he he does much of that. You know, music related preparation for that's a fair important answer. events. Pawn to f three. Yeah, Magnus is yeah. Magnus is just completely winning here. You don't have to do much. You know. Yeah, this has just gone completely off the rails for for a team. If he was doing fine and then he missed one one tactical shot and was instantly completely lost. <clears throat> that would bring the score up to plus two. It would be a bit of a key game. Yeah, and uh, how much? Group B4 doesn't change the outcome, but it's nice. Well, it's it little... might. I mean, if, if, if the B pawns actually get traded off the board. Yeah, 97. Yeah, huh? yeah, now it's just a queen. Yeah, now it's just a queen. Yeah, that was a very, very strange choice to play queen C4 there. Just when you were sort of given a second lease on life, um, yeah, that, that yeah, this is just just a queen somehow. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. Now I see three, and then and then B one is quite efficient. Uh, Magnus back to plus two, and there is going to be probably another half an hour of this. I'm I've lost count a little bit. Let me full screen the Zoom call. Twenty three minutes left. Yeah. 23 minutes is another four. No, not four. Four is a bit optimistic, probably. Three games left? Could be. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen this particular Sicilian before. It doesn't really look very good, but maybe it's a sort of a, an acceptable version of a collapse. So 2A6. 2A6 is just hoping for D4, but everyone knows this. And here, black's supposed to be fine after E5. But if white goes c3 or c4, he's usually considered to be better. And this, I think I've seen once, but I didn't like it. Sort of a worse Kalashnikov, the opening. h4, very direct. Yeah, and uh, the king of eight, king g seven, the kind of a slow manual way to castle here is a is a cute reaction by our team of trying to neutralize the the push on the h file by keeping the rook on h eight. But yeah, how do you react to knight d five here? It's going to be kind of awkward here. Queen c one. I guess he's suffer. Going. Has to play yeah. h six. So yeah. there's no h six by white. Allowing h six check was completely unthinkable, but now the structure is uh, a bit a bit ruined. The square is nice, but it's not enough, right?
it's not it's not that bad. Like if if White ends up castling Kingside, maybe this is semi playable. But I think Magnus can keep that that option uh, uh, flexible for a while yet. Go like Rook D one, hint that maybe playing a four, keeping the King on E one. The King on E one is completely safe. So yeah, he doesn't even want to keep it open. He just castles Queenside. Says I will be giving mate in this game. I assume he takes. Yeah, he takes. Looked looked uh, sensible. F four coming next. Yeah. He'll probably just go at four straight away. We have to give credit to the pirates joke. That's a very solid joke. Who do pirates vote for? Our team, yeah. It's very funny. It is. Uh, it is very, very good work. We have the the most advanced polls on of, of, of all the internet. I'm pretty sure on this on this channel. That we have. We, we found have... out by questioning millions of users. Absolutely, in polls. Run on this runs on run on this channel, uh, which is sort of exactly the way the way to go about things. Um, yeah, Magnus doing very well here. I I assume you have to play something like Queen of Six and then take on E five with the Queen, and play the, those types of end games. But they are not much fun. Where do you stand on pirates in general? Uh, you have to have a very, very good internet connection, otherwise it doesn't work. Hmm. You mean to track the ships you want to conquer? Excellent. Let's go with that, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I I couldn't really fully commit to that to that bit, uh, but um should be three FE5. Yeah, I think I think this might go might go poorly for Vlad. I didn't see F e five though. I was about to suggest Bishop takes d three, and then Magnus explained immediately why that is a bad move. And now White is better everywhere. Safer King, strong passers in the center, uh, better Knight. Yeah, just just a very very poor position. This is it. Dr. Nostril saying, Jan Peter, sometimes I email Wesley so and he always replies. Who are the other highly friendly super grabmasters? Peter is the only other one. <laughs> and uh, although I wouldn't suggest emailing me unless you you you, you have some kind of I would, though. press inquiry. Yeah. I've become a, a lot grumpier in my in my dotage and I don't take wouldn't want to risk a grumpy reply from Peter, would you, Doctor Nostra? Yeah, that's uh, nobody wants that. That is that is something you think should be at pains to avoid. Yeah, Magnus completely uh, completely crushing this game. This is, I want to say, maybe this is the first properly blowout game that Magnus is winning in this match somehow. He's won a, a great number of them, but they normally were very, very scrappy. And this one is just like Vlad played a dodgy opening and was never in the game after that. Maybe I'm missing one somewhere, but it really does feel like this is the, the first of its kind today. What's happening? I am I'm fighting with Jake Lones in the chat. I'm trying to bring Jake 098998 into a position of power. Has uh, like what prompted this? Why 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 the fighting? Um I forgot, but I had a I had a great reason. I, I do not doubt. Oh yeah, I course. think Jake Lons did not acknowledge my my Discord channel, which is dedicated to German trash TV mainly. How could he miss that? Is there a Discord? I'm I'm joining I'm joining the Discord. Sure. You better I watch am. some German trash TV. What's going I on here? G four? Is this like Russian trash, trash openings? Yeah, I have I have no idea what this is, but it looks. It looks funky. Bishop f3? Whoa. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think Jabawa would disavow this. I think this is Jabawa like, would say this is too much. Play F3, H4 <laughs> like a normal person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you play F3 and H4 like a normal person here? Artemia was saying, I need to have a little fun to untilt myself now that I'm down three. Yeah, I, I have no idea what I even think about this position. And do I think about this position is also unclear. Um, let's take on this. Let's, let's go properly off the roads here and go bishop to f6 for no particular reason. I don't know. H6, they're both messing around. Yeah, I think I think they've uh, uh, they've decided to play this game according to some kind of. Uh, I think I, I I told you about this game once on air, right? We used to uh, there was this game we we, we used to play in uh, when we were kids. Uh, it was called Nimsevich Chess, where basically where basically you were not allowed to make any move at all unless you could justify it by, you know, pretend quoting the my system. Not and familiar. I only recall you told me about this game where you would flip a matchbox when you were kids. Also that, but also yeah, those were the two games I was I was playing. You know, depending on the time of day and the, the company I was in, I was either flipping matchboxes or playing Nimzo chess. And the other like a full childhood. Um, did, did you enjoy the Nimzo chess part, or did it make you the Nimzovich hater? You are now. It was of the like extremely weird chess variants we played as kids. It was not the most exciting, but uh, there was there was definitely something to it. it. At least it developed your verbal skills. It probably didn't help your chess very much, but it developed your verbal skills. It's like being in debate club. <clears throat> I think I was never, you know, my my, my son is a is a professional debater by this point, but. Uh, uh, when I was growing up, we didn't really have debate clubs, but that was the, the closest approximation of a debate club I can think of in, in, in a chess setting. What, what are they doing? They're breaking all the rules. He's castling queenside, now he's going b5, a5. What is this? The computer is saying black is better? What happened to pawns never move back? Uh, well, it's still true, but you know, you can't move them forward without moving them forward, right? Very profound insights to, to be found on this channel at all times of day and night. I just allowed it in chat, Dodgy. What are you talking about? We, uh, I think it's, it's going to be very, very difficult for us to actually return to discussing the position on the, on the board. I, I have a feeling. I'm good. I'm good. Knight f3. He's trying to keep d3 covered, but positionally, this has gone not very well. Yeah, Magnus can now win material with d takes c3 and b4, but that spoils his own structure. So maybe he will look for something bigger. But could do this. What what is Artemia going to do? He's going to go with rook c5, probably not. He just goes rook c4 and yeah, the game rook c4 king b1, it? and the game the game very much continues. Yeah, I think dc3 and then knight e6 is also very playable. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. No, he does go b4. So greedy. Yeah, greed is as we all know excellent. I think white genuinely has compensation for the pawn here. It's not even, you know, a pretend blitz compensation. It's hmm. now g three king b one, and then the, the white knight, I guess, uh, starts uh, towards the c four square, and the knight on d three is a bit stuck. So yeah, knight g two, knight c four. Although I mean, it gets there, and then black plays queen c five or something. I don't know. Probably here black comes one. Harvey Dent. The white knight. Nothing. Knight c4, queen c5. 
fearless. Yep, controlling controlling the tactics here quite well. There are no jumps. You can go knight b2, but the knight on d3 is so well protected that you don't really care. Rook h5 creating a threat of knight takes e5. Feels like black could... Yes, he's allowing knight takes e5. Has he seen something there? Like, what is he planning to do after knight e5 here? Queen of two? What? He's, he just doesn't care anymore. Yeah, that, that is also a very possible... Uh, possible explanation for this move. I I don't quite understand what he uh, what he means there. He's only plus two, right? It's uh, uh it's not really. Oh, I'm the queen. Sick. Yeah. No, he's plus three, right? He's plus, yeah. Right. If he's plus three, then maybe maybe he he uh, justifiably uh, relaxed here a little bit, but still. Rook h five was kind of telegraphing the idea of knight takes e five, so completely ignoring it seems uncharacteristic. Yeah, absolutely. I was also going to remark on that on that comment. We our our personal relationship has obviously hit an all time low, which is why we're doing this show every day. Um, mm. Yeah, completely winning for white, but. Uh, Magnus will still be up by quite a bit after this game. Two. Fair. Still hanging in there somehow. Yeah. I mean, completely. You can't beat me at awkward silence. Come on. <laughs> or you, you mean the game? <laughs> yeah, I definitely can't beat you at awkward silence. Uh, um, not even, not not even trying to, honestly. And uh, I mean, you've introduced me to the to the art of uh, of awkward silence, so I I'm forever indebted to you. That's not how you pronounce that word for for showing me the way. This is the way. I mean, on three seconds, how clear is this? Pretty clear. Pro probably clear enough. Yeah. Although King D2 now and yeah, like C5, C4. What? This is pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. What the hell? Lad. What the hell? I mean, he probably doesn't lose, but I mean, even that is not a hundred percent certain anymore on, on, on a second in this position. Like you can definitely lose this now. Uh yeah, this is a very uh, normal setup. But queen, queen of yeah, queen of six, queen of six. Yeah, you, you just dance around. Whoa. Queen, queen b six, ninety seven. Yeah, yeah queen Knight of six also good. Whoa. Yeah. So black actually ends up winning this game. <laughs> That's uh, you you you, you got to laugh if you're not Artemis. If you're Artemis, you're probably not laughing. Um, you do feel like that's probably the final nail, honestly. Uh, even minus two would have been difficult dif difficult to come back from, but minus four, and in particular minus four from that position is arguably unrecoverable. What do you mean secretly, uh, fifth sector? Nothing secret about it. I was very open. Um, and now we have the, the Londons in full bloom. At C2, he's done this once before, allowing knight to B4. And yeah, it's slightly less than, than it looks, but only slightly. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised. Take the bishop. Yeah, why, why, didn't we, why didn't we go after the bishop there? I don't really understand. I guess bishop h5, g6, and we trade, uh, we trade the, you know, quote unquote, inferior piece for it. But yeah. I would have probably been very hard pressed not to play night before there. Mm. Why? Just play it. Magnus does enjoy this so called card spot structure. Even before, I think, 
Recent computers, these the Leelas of the world, I think they quite like the structure for white. So I'm sure you will mention Katakamski, but I believe Magnus also deserves some credit for making us aware that these structures are kind of tricky. Yeah, I think Magnus is uh, high. If, uh, I, I wanted to check out what Nightbot will think about mods actually uh, using non-English. And mods have to quite a bit to say on the topic. Apparently, Not mods, but Nightbot specifically have uh, something to say on the topic. Yeah, Magnus Nightbot has been... Norwegian? That's just odd. Uh, Magnus has been, you know, searching out these opportunities to play the, the reverse Carlsbad for a while, has been doing this in a lot of openings and definitely enjoys the structure and understands it quite well. But yeah, sh sh shouldn't really be anything, you know, quote unquote objectively, but you know, not that anybody cares really. He's allowing h3. Doesn't bother him. h3, g3, knight to g4. I think it's Probably. better than I, I think it's better than uh, playing h3 yourself and allowing knight h5 for four. That knight oh, would have okay. been very very difficult to shake. Mm. But yeah, now it now it gets a bit racy, right? Because uh, black wants to play g5, g4, and white wants to play for a, a, a4, b5. Both are quite fast, but for now. Black appears to be winning the race a little bit because there is no good square for the knight on f3 after g4, so you have to do something. Um, Move something. Maybe it just goes b5 and hopes for the best. It takes, queen takes, g4, rook b1, rook d7. Rook, yeah, rook d7 uh, is a bit too. See what happens. There, yeah. Although there's knight e5 in the end in that position. It's actually oh, a. I did well, say that. Yeah. Takes, takes g3, but yeah, we're probably getting a little bit too carried away trying to analyze some position five moves ahead. Yeah. Um, Suki Ray is asking, has Peter always had a beard? I can't remember. Yeah, he's always had a beard. For a, I mean, for a longish time, yeah. For the past. So not always, just to be clear. Yeah. For the last five years or so. G5 and Magnus is taking a lot of time here. Maybe it's on purpose to get rid of the three minute portion. Damn it. Goes 95. 95 straight away. Uh, that's, uh, I was going to say curious, but maybe it's logical enough. Yeah, takes, takes. We can't really go knight g4 because knight f3 actually protects everything. There's a lot hanging there, but it's all protected by knight f3. So I assume you go knight d7. Ah, Magnus just says, like, I agree you, you were sort of winning that race. So let's trade, trade the queens and play some endgame. It's probably a perfectly playable endgame for black, to be honest. Takes, takes g4, and then knight b6, king d7 if we're allowed. Mm, seems very acceptable for, uh, for black. And I don't know if you can afford not to take on g4 here. Like, queen f5 seems a bit too slow. There's a lot of requests in the chat that I should grow a beard. I'd love to have a beard, but I do have the facial hair of a 13-year-old girl with very little facial hair. So I cannot do it. I'd love to. That was a very descriptive description. I enjoyed it. King B8 is quite clever, actually, asking Magnus to trade on uh, on uh, Vlad's terms for creating a weakness. Not happening. Oh, G4. Closing. Now he's safe, question mark. It's Queen yeah, G6, I mean, you push, no, A4 or B5 or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Queen F4 is no longer very attractive with the white pawn already. Yeah. Yeah, just as I say that, he goes Queen F4 anyway. Takes, takes, not die in c4. Um, yeah, knight three rook c8 was a bit awkward, so he wants to get rid of the weakness on c3 before uh, setting up something on the king's side. You want to play knight b6. Like a box of chocolate. Knight b6, c5. Hmm. 
I'm completely blanking on how you want to continue that simile. Uh, like, in what way are Magnus's moves like a box of chocolate? You never know what you're going to get. I suggest uh, the the vanilla way, yeah? I don't know. I thought it's referencing a popular movie. It might might resonate with people it's as a mental picture. Fair. Black is probably much better, but um, scores being what they are. You feel like our team needs to win not this one, but also the next three to... Well, next three is a, is a bit much. Then the scores would actually be level, but... Um, Apparently not, black is much better if my reading comprehension is correct here. Why exactly? Not not entirely sure. I think maybe allowing that takes of the end, now allowing 93 that takes before. I think Magnus really isn't paying much attention anymore at all. Because yeah, that, that sequence was Next not time. yeah, that, that sequence was not really best best, you know, business practice. Uh, even though he he's Do your has, due diligence. Yeah, rook b2, rook a uh, rook h2 and uh, it's all that, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. sure this was not sure this was the cleanest. We've seen position. Artemi have not win better positions like last game. Here, yeah. these pawns are not not slow. Not yeah, and he's gonna lose this as well. Oh my god, <laughs> he's just winning any position. Yeah, this is this is not great. This is it, as bad as it's gonna get for our team. Yeah, that was just so completely winning. And it didn't even look like he was doing that poorly on the clock either. That was just, I think he is like severely tilted by this point. Because uh, he, Magnus is not playing all that well, but uh, Vlad is just butchering all kinds of uh, all kinds of good positions. Back to B three. Yeah, and that we expect is the last game of the session. So there will be a break. I mean, you would say a much needed break, but honestly, minus five. It's over. Yeah, it's it's kind of over. Magnus, yeah, did not play well, but he's still up plus five against one of the best blitz players in the world. I guess we should tra praise his instincts, potential, blah, blah, blah. But also Artemiev will not be thrilled about how this went. No, no, I think, uh, I think he has every reason to expect better from himself. He is just... A I have a feeling they started the game with 1b3, then they realized there was no time left on the clock and they went to break. Yeah, that that feels very likely. Yeah. Probably they clicked the rematch button quickly enough for them to actually try starting the game. And then they were informed by, by admins that there is no game to start. So... We take a break too. I, I need a coffee. It's okay if I go get a coffee and Absolutely. then we're yeah, ready, can, ready for bullet. I can stick around and uh, uh, discuss our... If you have questions for Super Grandmaster, eight-time Russian champion, beard wearer, Peter Swidler, now is the chance. Also, go to chess24.com slash premium. Pursue a premium membership and learn. I'll be back. Lard8094 is saying, I think Jan should lower his volume. They don't match. I can do that. Sometimes I just yell because I get excited. Apologies. I can lower it. And uh, Sukire uh, says I'm actually insane, which is not incorrect. Uh, I didn't, I was kind of hoping people wouldn't notice for quite a while yet, but uh, I guess the game is up. What to do? Story time. I, the, the issue with story time, Polotovarman, uh, uh, is there needs to be a prompt. There needs to be something that uh, you know jogs the memory. It's it's like you know telling telling jokes on demand. It's very very difficult to do unless there's something that 
prompts a story. Tell a long journey. Yeah, I guess for some reason there is a very specific, uh, very specific long joke I always think about when people ask me to tell a long joke, but it's not really suitable for uh, this. Is this you know jokes aside? This is a family show, and I'm not, I'm not telling the long joke that uh, uh, immediately comes to mind when people ask me about that. Uh, did you ever meet Karpov? I played Karpov, uh, Ref Preacher. Uh, not not a lot, but I did play maybe five classical and and some rapid and blitz games against Karpov in my career. Uh, what would trigger your eventual retirement from chess? Or do you just enjoy playing it now that you have been doing it? Yeah, I'm never doing a Korchnoi. Uh, that's for sure. Like nobody is really doing a Korchnoi. Victor was one of a kind. I, I think, you know, even suggesting somebody could try doing a Korchnoi is somewhat blasphemous. Uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm, I'm kind of scaling down. Uh, I'm not even without the, you know, 2020 being what it is, I would probably play less than I played the previous years, but I will continue playing as long as it's fun. Uh, and it is still fun for now, but it's, uh, <laughs> he wants to tell his version of the aristocrats. No, <laughs> no, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a much simpler joke. The one, the one I mean, Dr. Nostro, uh, not the aristocrats. No. Uh, also, you probably need more enemies to do a Korchnoi, as Dodgy correctly uh, correctly points out. Does the name Trent prompt some story? Uh, you know, stop! Stop for you! Stop making a story happen. It's not going to happen, as the the quote goes. Who would win at arm wrestling, you or Hikaru? I have the weight advantage, but Hikaru is probably fitter than I am. I don't know. Uh, probably Hikaru, but. I mean, all the hiking he does, he appears to be very, very fit right now. But it's, I don't think it would be extremely one-sided either. Uh, do you speak English more Russian? Well, I mean, Russian in everyday life in particular, say. So that's, uh, I don't think anybody else will come anywhere near, uh, anywhere near those three. Uh, do you speak English at home? I speak English with my kids, yeah. Uh, they kind of insist on it. Um, I mean, was there an F? I, it, it seems alive on on my screen, but I'm not actually watching the stream. I have chat open, and chat sometimes is still alive when the stream is when the stream is F. But uh, looks like we're back. Um, I've heard that the Karakan should only be played by players above 2,000 as the positional subtleties are too hard for low rated players to understand. I am not sure it's true about any opening, honestly. It's a question of putting the hours in. You can definitely get adjusted to, to the strategic uh, points of most. Like You, you would not be uh, you, you know, a world-renowned specialist in the opening, but I don't think you can just completely uh, you know, outlaw uh, any opening for players under a certain rating that would be a sad thought uh, to me i think that caro can be played at any level uh, crunchy or creamy peanut butter i actually don't do peanut butter at all so i don't have an opinion but and like when i think of peanut butter it's it's creamy i i don't think i've ever had crunchy so uh, bye guys see you tomorrow I don't know what prompted that, but uh, I am extremely apologetic. Uh, nobody, nobody wanted that. Are you, are you team crunchy? I don't know what. There is no team creamy. It's just wrong. I'm not exactly team creamy. I've just never had crunchy. I, as I, I mentioned, I usually don't get into food arguments. Like milk, I understand. It's a personal choice. People don't like to talk about it in public, and they are somewhat embarrassed to admit that. Deep down, they know that barista oat is by far the best milk or milk adjacent product, but creamy or crunchy peanut butter, uh, I don't know. It's just so obvious to me. Anyone with a moral compass should see clearly there too. I, I definitely just, like crunchy just the things. Makes me, makes me mad. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to get all political. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh... Don't don't really you know have a dog in that fight. I don't I don't eat peanut butter. 
um, <clears throat> never really had peanut butter, you know, in, in, in the house when I was growing up and we never bought any for our kids either. So it's not a very, you know, Russian delicacy. We do condensed milk around here, around these parts. Um, and, you know, for proper aristocracy, there is boiled condensed milk. Do you have condensed barista oat? Probably not. I mean, I've never done any research. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if such a thing existed, but uh, not, not my particular field of expertise. It's not too late. No it's peanut a, butter and just a house of empty, house of empty much boxes to play with. Yeah. Yeah. You're describing it to, uh, to a T, uh, dodgy. As they, as they actually used to say, when I was growing up, there was this saying, uh, hard childhood wooden toys. So yeah, well, compared to, to my childhood of specifically empty match boxes and nothing else, you know, wooden toys is, is a un, uh, un, un, unattainable dream. Haven't we come full circle on the wooden toys? Pretty much. Yeah. I think, uh, I think they're back in, back in vogue now. Bullet is also back in vogue. The last portion of this match has just begun. Magnus Carlsen with a commanding lead. And the one plus one section should not change that. Our team will have to win pretty much all the games to have a chance, which is just not happening. Yeah, I think uh, we all we all know how it goes when Magnus is 10-5 up after after the blitz portions and uh, with the with the one one section uh, ahead he is a extremely strong bullet player so yeah you you don't really give him five points odds before the start of the bullet i bet peter has opinions on david foster of all this yeah i have i have the, the that book on my nightstand it has been on my nightstand for the past five years i don't think i'm ever touching it honestly i'm too scared um, um, it's just not happening. See, Dad. Who? David, David Foster Wallace. Foster no, Wallace. I, I think he is still around. Okay. Just checking. But I is have read a book. I thought. Yeah. Oh, he is. The, oh, okay. Yeah, that's. Uh, and apparently it's uh, yeah, not not a particularly cheerful subject either. I was not yeah, aware no, of it. No, something. Was... <sighs> yeah, but apparently I, I did read a book which was compared by somebody whose literary taste I sort of trust uh, uh, to David Foster Wallace, which is a, a book called All the Wrong Moves uh, uh, on the topic of, you know, being addicted to chess and chess addiction from a from a standpoint of somebody who is not very good but loves the game unreservedly speaking of all the wrong moves carlson has gotten into trouble here after rook f8 nice little combination yeah 94 check is very clever he's still worse but uh he would have been in more trouble if he didn't spot that um i have actually read gravity uh, gravity's rainbow but i can't say much much has registered with me like i i need to start reading in a more thoughtful manner because things just don't stick with me but i did read it there's a debate who's more well read peter is way more well read than me by virtue of reading when it comes to trash tv though I'm way more, what's, what's the word? More watched? Possibly, yeah. It's unclear. Be a term. Yeah, Vlad is actually And of winning. course, poker books. I did read poker books, Peter has. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a, a kind of a low blow here available to me, which I will refrain from making maybe. Or maybe I won't refrain from making it. I don't know. I'm still undecided. Depending on how mean I, you, you are to me in the next five minutes. Wow. Now, now I kind of want to know. But I'm also afraid. Yeah. Well, I mean, you said you 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 actually read some poker books, so th there is an obvious comeback to that, right? Not only did you, <laughs> did you read them, you also wrote some. 
That is true, yeah. I'm the Pamela Anderson of book writing. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. In what we are, I was, I was going to ask. We both wrote more books than we read. Yeah, that, that they used to say that about Brezhnev. Uh, so you, you, you know, you, you can choose whether you want to be Pamela Anderson or Brezhnev of, of book writing. I think I'll go with Pam. Yeah, I think I, I had a feeling you will stick with your original original choice there. Finally, some Grunfeld. What's going on here? Knight D2 oh, is fashionable, right? I think Bishop takes D2 is is slightly more fashionable, but Knight D2 also uh, also exists. Yeah, supposed to be fine-ish for Black, I think, but not without its uh, perils. <laughs> I'll be watching this with great interest because I have a feeling I might have to cover this position for the course and uh, having a bit of a clue on what Magnus thinks about it is going to be quite valuable. Because we've Giving seen Magnus has been playing nothing but cutting edge theory throughout this match. Rookie seven computer does not agree with the world champion. Yeah, I guess bishop d7 is a bit of an issue. Yeah, this rook might never actually uh, get back home. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if he if he just decides to, I mean, I'm not suggesting that that will that will sound a lot more incendiary than it is meant. In, but like, if, if if Magnus loses the first three, and this particular game for now appears somewhat self-inflicted, honestly, he. White is not really supposed to be trying to equalize in Bishop 3 Grunfelds when the Queens come off. Although Drama. it's only 10 to 6. And he's worse. Is he worse? Maybe not anymore. Yeah, I think I think maybe uh, uh, Vlad did not uh, did not pick up the exchange in the most optimal manner. This pawn on this side. Should hated Bishop F6, we're being told here. Yeah. Could be. Rookie 7, hang on, isn't. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Also, Bishop D6. Yeah, I don't oh, know. So. I don't know what Vlad is doing. Yeah. And now White is probably just better uh, because that pawn on D7 will survive regardless of, maybe not entirely regardless of what you're doing. But uh, Bishop G3. Uh, maybe Black makes a draw, but it's it's going to be an uphill, an uphill struggle even even to make that draw. And um, that is not much fun considering that Magnus quite clearly. Uh, did something quite questionable early on. Yeah, this is probably just bad now. Oh, yeah. B3, rook B5, and then the A pawn runs. No, so he has to defend this. This is this is not good. Yeah, I think I think you end up losing this, even if it is uh, holdable to, to begin with. You, you you still end up losing this in a blitz game or, or a bullet game. Yeah, you just eventually you blunder something and and the position collapses. <clears throat> yeah, h5 check is a bit of a threat, so maybe Magnus actually managed to misplay it to such an extent that now he has to trade pieces. That's very clever no. by by Vlad, actually. You can't you, you can't keep the pawn on the seven pretty. alive. Rook h3, yeah. you can do it. Oh, yeah. Rook h3 is quite clever. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, this is Missed. a draw now, I assume. Now it's a draw. Yeah, king, king e7 and then bishop c7 was also very efficient, but yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, now the, the king on h5 has no squares. Yeah, it's just a very easy draw. Not even going king e7 there. I don't know why. Yeah, Magnus uh, Magnus does play this just, to, I, I guess, just to finish the game. Obviously, we're we're not trying to win or anything. He doesn't seem very concerned about keeping the game going as long as possible. Maybe he is. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think. Uh, Plus four, and with no real indication that he is in any trouble, he is not going to, uh, you know, artificially inflate uh, inflate games here. No real need to. We need five check. <laughs> yeah, no, no okay. idea. It's it's the 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 new fad Magnus is trying to promote. Yeah, these these weird. Let's give you a tempo for no reason checks. Hmm. I guess in order to play six here, I guess that's... Made some sense, but if you really want the queen out of the way... Yeah, uh, I think okay. I, yeah, I guess there's some logic to that. Hmm. 
No, I was I actually was on the verge of asking you, and then they started playing, and I never had any time uh, to to return to that topic. I was good before. If the queen takes the rook, recaptures and grabs the b7 pawn, so Magnus Carlsen just retreats quietly. Queen b3, our team is trying to use the semi-open file, but Carlsen gets his queen out of the way. Knight a4 and turning knight c5 is possible, but black could just meet it by b6. So Vlazla, our team, plays knight e2, head for g3. Carlsen stops it by going knight f5, and here comes b5, the so-called minority attack. But will it lead to any weaknesses? Black knight on d6. Skipping uh, the positions. Well defended, queen b4, queen b6. Carlsen has equalized here. No particular problems. So probably, probably slightly better for black, maybe even if, if, if all the rooks come off. Um, yeah, no issues and more time on the clock as well. So. Seen any good movies recently? Uh, not in a while, no. I've, have I even watched any movies recently? I've been, I've been catching up on my TV backlog. Let me check what my movies directory. Are you on Letterboxd? Oh, what is that? It's a platform where you can track what movies you watched and rate them and people can follow you and then we mm. can approve of your ratings or disagree with them. Uh, no, I'm not. And, uh, and also it, it, it doesn't seem like I watched much in a way of... Yeah, the, the what is that question sort of gave away. You probably weren't. Mm. Magnus yeah. Carlsen going for b5, b4 here, fearlessly weakening the c5 square in order to grab more space on the queen side and build a potential passed pawn. Now f6 to kick this knight not only away, but also away from the defense of the d3 pawn. He takes a pawn. White still has some activity and a potential knight on nice. seven. Quite but a lot of activity, out. actually, yeah. Knight of four coming next. Yeah, this is a sharp position. Yeah, judging by the fact that uh, of the movies I've watched, the, the the only one I appear to have saved for potential rewatching is Burning, which I've watched maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah, it's not not been a particularly productive uh, year for me. Also, I told you to watch Burning, so yeah, I'm, I'm that recommendation does not help me at all. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm still very grateful to you because yeah, that was that was one of the best things I've seen in a that was long, long while. Yeah. Of me to share that knowledge about Bernie. Yeah, Artemis is winning again, but you know, probably not going to. <laughs> I think it's going enough. I mean, yeah, yeah. To yeah. Match. Yeah, this one, this one, he probably does win. Although, yeah, it, it gets kind of touch and go somewhere around. Yeah, like. I think for 24 though, yeah. 24 is maybe a strong move. Three, hang on. Did you ever see the movie Constantine, Peter? Oh, this is too exciting. Sorry, I'll ask about Constantine. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't know. I don't know if you believe what you just said. Yeah, but this is uh, this is now very much a game. I have watched Constantine, maybe even more than once by mistake. Wow. Free will? Uh. Is that a question whether I've watched Constantine of, out of my free will or? Yes. Yes. At least, I mean, for the first time, definitely. Yeah. I actually kind of like the, you know, this genre of kind of good, bad movies or, I mean, for a given value of good, obviously. It's interesting because our dear friend Rustam Kazantranov has watched Constantine 27 times and he's, he's not done. Yeah, it's a it's a known phenomenon. Like I recently, I've stumbled upon, uh, across an article uh, praising Demolition Man as, as it's a, a great huge, movie, as a hugely not underrated movie. Let's not Constantine with Demolition Man. And uh, Zoltan Almoshi, when he was much younger, I think watched Demolition Man something like forty times. That I makes know, perfect sense to me. I don't know if he's still Draw watching here. Demolition Man, but uh, he he definitely used to watch it at you know every every opportunity. Uh, still plus four for Magnus and the timer is running out. Somewhat. Time is running out. Queen C7, we are playing another version of the Kaspar structure, this time via the Karokam. This is a dangerous system, especially these early H3s recently have caught up a lot of momentum, 
Mm -hmm. D6, Bishop D6 is also what Fedosev likes to do in such structures. It looks ugly to me, but yeah. it seems like they've done their homework and concluded. I'm also, I, I've seen good. this before, but I'm still extremely surprised by this idea that you can go knight a3 and black doesn't take. Kids and their knights these days. Yeah, kids these days is... is Isn't this just bad. horrible for black though? This I don't like at all. Yeah, I have no idea why you would do this to yourself. Uh, I'm guessing this keeps pieces on the board and you know generates a position where you can pretend you have an attack on the king side, but leave. yeah, you, you, you're mainly pretending. G4, desperate. Magnus calculating B5, G8, 3. If H3, Bishop B5, D, Knight G4 is the intention, and B5 played, I'm assuming he would just take. Yeah, I, this is all very confusing. I, I wouldn't have guessed more or less any of the last few moves. Um. But now white white appears to be very much back in control because you have to if you have to take only five to win back the g4 pawn then you will have to trade queens and that end game is extremely cheerless. In fact, the knight on g4 just gets caught in in the end of that line. Yeah, it's just probably lost for black. Not good, not good at all. Just a completely lost endgame now for Black. Yeah, Rook C1. Yeah, you, you you might as well just wrap things up here and go go next. Go next. Life is peaceful there. Hmm. I think they might have changed the lyrics in your neck of the woods. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Although it was kind of when that came out, there was there was definitely a bit of titillation going on because people weren't very very used to the idea of the the hymn being treated that way. Carlson wins another game. The score, yeah, speaks a clear language. Yeah, back to one b three and. Uh, Magnus showing uh, showing how it's done by by pushing bishop b5 e4. I was not really aware that was an option. I will, I'm learning all kinds of things about 1b3 today. Uh, bishop takes h2 potentially is already a threat for all we know. Uh, so you have to be careful. This is all theory. Mm. And h5 is what the cool kids do. Sacrificing a pawn, but saying I have bishops. He does have bishops. Yeah. I'm not quite sure why not f5. Welcome back, everybody. Apologies, hopefully. You people can still see us while we're covering the Magnus Carlsen versus Vladislav Artemiev match, where Magnus Carlsen has a demanding lead up four in the bullet section, last the last game. And now there's a sharp position on the board. Peter Swidler, what's going on? Well, Magnus is uh, going to win this because there's not going to be enough time. But Artemiev did win the previous one, the one where we were saying that White never has enough uh, enough time to mount any kind of comeback and Black gets uh, all, all the mating threats in first. But uh, Artemiev won that very, very easily. And he's probably doing quite well in this one as well. Uh, as Let's say I demanding can... late. I meant it, commanding. It, you did, but... Hmm. Uh, maybe he is demanding, we acknowledge his lead as, as being extremely commanding. Uh, so witty. 
Where did you learn to speak English so well, Peter? Mm. See, I silenced Peter. Yeah, I've uh, a simple compliment. You, you, you broke me with that. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it doesn't take very much these days to completely break me. Rook c three now. It's a. It's a fun position. It's a pity that there's so little intrigue left in, uh, in the match because. Uh, the last couple of games were were quite exciting, and if the the score was at least a little bit closer, we would have had a uh, a lot more a lot more fun with this. Okay, now our team just leaves the knight on prees, which is uncalled for, and Magnus doesn't take on e4. This is like slightly comical, honestly. Uh, what's happening here? Queen takes e4 was not a bad move on the previous move, to, <laughs> you have to say, and. Uh, boom. Mm -hmm. Slightly early, but doesn't matter. Yeah, Artemiev is. I mean, this endgame is probably technically winning now, uh, which will bring the score up to minus three, which is still way too much. Hanging round with the time remaining. Magnus did look like he was in a good horse, only jumps as high as it has to jump mode today. Yeah, it, it did. It did feel like that uh, certainly, and uh, it's uh, hard to blame him for that either. It's. Uh, it's an understandable feeling when you're so far, so far ahead when the bullet portion starts. But yeah, for 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 us as viewers, obviously, it's a bit regrettable that it's not closer. Um, yeah, what's more exciting than a close match? Um, yeah, it looks like yes. the world champion will most likely advance to the semifinals. There, he will face Maxim Vashila Graf. His potential opponent in the next classical world championship match as well. So that's a treat to look forward to. And also in half an hour on this very channel, there will be coverage of the Nakamura against Fedoseyev match by the great Peter Leko and the great Tanya Sachdev. So there is so much chess today to still look forward to. It's almost a pity, Peter, that you will spend the next eight hours playing Hearthstone. I will watch season three of The Bachelorette in German because I finished the current season. What are we doing with our lives? Well, exactly what you've described, and uh, neither of us uh, appear to be complaining. Although I, I'm complaining. Yeah, I'm also com apparently I've complained uh, almost five hundred times, and I think if I actually hit the five hundred mark, the world ends. So. I should probably, you know, work on achieving a sunnier disposition post haste. I don't know how to get there though. Magnus actually is running the clock down in this one. That's a bit unexpected. Oh, professional. Queen G7, very precise. Mate next move. And he's thinking about it. <laughs> he actually is thinking about it. Like that's uh that's some that's some BM right there. Uh, I did not expect to see that honestly. I I, I think the, it's not it's not close enough to demand he you know wastes the entirety of the last ten seconds there. But what do I know? Maximizing the EV is what the, the, all the best players do apparently. Ulti Optimo is saying with Peter and Tanya it's all business. There you go. You'll get. Strictly business like EPMD in the next session. And our shenanigans will disappear like Kaiser Sose. If you want to distract Peter Leko, though, I'll give you a few pro tips. Ask him about wrestling, particularly like late 90s, like Bret Hart, when the WWE was still called WWF. He will, he will share strong opinions. Or you could also ask him about Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. I once lost a name Van Damme movies of against Peter Leko, and I'm amazing at naming Van Damme movies. I, I've watched quite a lot when I was younger, but uh, I've given oh, up I'd at crush some point. you, but Peter Leko... Oof. You've seen them all. Yeah, and the, and the, the issue is when I was actually watching them, I, I I didn't really speak English yet, and I had no access to original movies, so I would know the names. In uh, you play that uh, poor Soviet Union card again. 
just yes wouldn't always not accepting all that. my superior van damme no 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 I, I i do accept it i'm just saying that uh, <laughs> okay. i would look relax I, mm. I can't relax time cop what that's a van damme movie probably is though yeah blood sport and blood sport 2 and potentially even blood sport 3 right i'm not even sure but like, was there blood, blood sport 3 was van damme and blood sport 2 even that is unclear. Yeah, this is. I'm more of a Michael Dudikoff kind of guy. Ah, uh, there I can't compete. Michael Dudikoff was that American Ninja? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that. I that, know there. That I whole, literally know nothing other than that. That that, that type of franchise. Yeah. Mm. Doctor Sausage is saying, "How many JZVD movies did you see in the theater?" I remember watching Hard Targets in the theater. There was a time when you could still smoke in movie theaters, and I happened to be a smoker then. It was very exciting. I smoked a lot of cigarettes. Um, yeah, that's a very distinct memory from my childhood. I was like nine at the time, but yeah, it's a highly recommended movie too. It stood the test of time. Hard targets. Uh, yeah. It's about rich people hunting humans for sports. Like uh, the, what was that that movie that uh, that the, there was a lot of uh, controversy was supposed to be released last year about uh, rich people hunting people for sport and uh, the people they were hunting for sport were all for some reason Republicans. The Hunt. Yeah, I think it was just called The Hunt, right? Yeah, that was. I've seen that one too. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> wasn't as thrilled as when I watched Hard Target. That's probably because you weren't smoking at the time, right? That... Mm, no comment. No, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, anyway, Magnus wins the one, uh, the one with black, and now he is c- completely in the clear, as if we didn't know that before. And uh, we get another lesson in this weird Queen takes D four, Queen E three. Uh, Sicilian. Then. Yeah, all the cool kids are doing this now. Magnus, Levon. And that's the list. I don't think those any other cool kids. Any other cool kids are actually doing that. But those those two are about us. Those cool two are the bullies in chess camp. Yeah. Jake Lone is asking if Peter's allowed a computer to play Hearthstone during the standard games. I would I assume to, at this point it's in your contract, right? Pretty much, yeah. I used to. I remember in the in the younger years, I would occasionally ask the arbiter to open a quick info page with the uh, with the current match of the day open there, and I would occasionally, like during the game, go and check the score, and the arbiters would kind of kind of uh, agree to that. Which, uh, thinking about it now, they probably shouldn't. That's probably a no. violation of. A, num- a number of very <laughs> very wrong. Yeah, but uh, you know, where's the harm? Hmm. It sets a dangerous precedent. Where does it end? Yeah. And when does this end? Soon, soon. You probably you, this is the last game. Yeah. Any any time now. No, no. What, what, how does it go? Yeah. Any day now. Any day now. I shall be released. Not that familiar is a, with the reference. Yeah, that's a. I'm not even sure if that's originally a Dylan song. Dylan, Dylan actually, Dylan definitely sang that, but I, I don't know if that's originally Dylan. Probably is. I, I have a chess-related memory actually connected with that song uh, oh. when I was. When I was in my in my twenties, music played a much bigger role in my like everyday life, and I had this really annoying habit of writing down sort of the lyric of the day on the score sheet. Uh, so my my um, score sheets in those years they all bore a testament to what I sort of what was playing in my head on repeat on the day. And there was different there were definitely tournaments where any day now any day now I shall be released was was very much the mood of the day and I was kind of uh, those were normally not very cheerful games 
when that was the song of the day. Mm. Yeah, I'm still not sure what we're talking about. This is Dylan Suffred. Yeah, yeah. I've always been more of a Brandon and Brenda fan. Magnus, blunder another piece. <laughs> he really yeah. wants. <laughs> yeah, he 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 wants out of there. He he is not really in, in any way enthused about any of this. But he's probably gonna hold this one too. They might yeah. both not be too thrilled about this match today, but the world champion did come through, which is all that matters in the end. Well, I'm not sure if it's all that matters, but. It's all that matters in terms of staying in the tournament. Yeah, this will. Although be... I think money-wise, I'm not, not sure how much this matters to Magnus, but there is a difference depending on the margin you score in the matches, right? You score a higher percentage. Yeah, I think I think there is matches. there is some additional incentive to win to win big, and uh, yeah, the margin I feels like could have been bigger today. Uh, could also have been smaller if uh, Artemi fused all the, all the chances he had in the in the earlier portions. The bullet didn't really feel like Magnus was in, in any trouble at any point, but mm. there were definitely a number of uh, blown chances by Artemi Ferle. All right, so the world champion wins the match. What's the final score? Thirteen and a half, nine and a half. Is that accurate? Seems to be accurate. Yeah. Google Gamer 123 is asking, Jan, are you an influencer? I do consider myself an influencer. So far, I do not yet get paid for influencing people on what products to buy, but I am highly influential, especially in the rice cooker opinion business. I have been asked many a time what rice cooker I prefer. So Magnus moves on. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, no I was. By many a time, I was going to say that that's uh, how many a time? Like seven times. That is actually a, a, a larger number than I anticipated hearing when I asked you that question. It's mm -hmm. a very respectable number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been, well, it's a bit of a running joke in the German chess 24 community, the rice cooker stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's fun shows. You guys should learn German and stuff. By. We talk about rice cookers, about um, German cuisine, it's all the good stuff. I was going to start a word, but I failed. So over to you, Peter. Yeah, I'm going to say this was, um, even though our, you know, our relationship has been uh, uh, exposed by the, the sleuth in the Chess24 chat, and uh, we no longer have, you know, the option of continuing the pretense of everything being happy and, and shiny. But this this still was uh, a fun in a perverted sort of way. But we do now have to set up the stage for the the next pair, the the, the actual shiny people. So thanks everybody for watching the the next match. Do we though? We could stick around. What do you have to do? We have like twenty minutes until they come. <laughs> yeah, but if we if we don't vacate the premises, they might never come. That's the I think. Also, the we should issue. ask Sotir as our producer if he actually needs time to set them up. In which case, alternatively, alternatively, you could listen to what Satirius has already told us on the topic. Ah, uh, not really. Rich. <laughs> Everyone knows it. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, CFO. Fira is saying, "I also bought a rice cooker thanks to Jan's opinion." There you go. There you go. Big rice, if you're watching, just saying, I do have the power to direct people certain ways, so I would not want to be left behind in the rice cooker wars of 2020 you might need a powerful ally all i'm saying thank you so much peter this has been fun not for magnus or artemiev or the viewers but who cares about any of them except magnus because i think he can probably get me fired potentially yeah and maybe even me yeah even though i'm not technically speaking employed but he still probably could get me fired i think so too yeah Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy Nakamura against Fedoseyev, another big match. Don't sleep on Fedoseyev because it would probably hurt him. And also, he's a very, very strong chess player. This will be a close enough match. So watch that. Peter Leko will be there. 
Make sure to ask Peter about wrestling and Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. Any Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. It doesn't have to be Lionheart or the obvious ones. The Quest, he's seen it. Don't you worry. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Cheers.